Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're listening to the voice of the people. Let's get ready for Boxing Voice. BoxingVoice.com. All the guys want, I want what Mayweather got. I want what Mayweather got. You didn't bust your ass like Mayweather. I was trying to fight every fight. I sacrificed a lot. To get to where I got to. What, what, what do you bring to the team? Let's get this on. Let's do it. Where's like this? It's, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Um, All right, that's it. Hold on. Every, Bernard, everybody calm down. Man, you know how these bitches is in this court. Total disrespect. Kid has no class, no style at all. I sacrificed a lot. Boxingboys.com. To get to where I got to. Boxing. Boxingboys.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another edition of the Boxing Voice Radio hashtag TBV podcast. It is Canelo Chavez Fight Week. Final press conference is in the bags. Tomorrow is the weigh in. Saturday night is the big fight battle for the throne throne of mexico that is we have the son of a legend julio cesar chavez jr taking on mexico's golden boy saul canelo alvarez this is what we're going to be talking about today as well as the undercard lucas la machina matisse is back it's been a long time since victor postal rearranged that eye socket of lucas he's back versus emmanuel transformer taylor Someone that we'll be having on the show today, and I think a little bird said maybe Jesse Vargas is stopping by once he gets done doing his Spanish uh, commentary on the Canelo Chavez out there in Las Vegas in fight week. We'll also be talking about the very deep undercard that Golden Boy put together for this pay-per-view. We got Gamboa on there, David Lemieux, uh, Joseph Diaz Jr., Marlon Esparza, just a slew of fighters are on there, and then we can't forget Tyson Fury. You know, he loves to keep his name in the media. Well, this time, it's uh, warranted. Uh, he's going to be having his hearing for that uh, drug scandal that he had, right? A little cocaine that he had on his... Uh, you well, know? So it's not cocaine. What, what, which, what, what is it, hipster? Hippity hipster? Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, he tested positive for Nandaron, I believe is the name of it. It's a type of steroid, anabolic steroid agent. Uh, both him and his cousin, Harry Fury, uh, allegedly popped for it under UCAD. That's why that hearing uh, needs to take place. Cocaine has nothing to do with the hearing, but the cocaine was what got him stripped of his boxing license in the UK. Well, since you're talking, let's get out to you. This is a beautiful performance against a very tough guy in Michael Johnson. How do you feel about it? Fuck that. Conor McGregor. Boxingboys.com. From a wicked entrance, from a flip over the rock, in a knock out now. When the main thing is, I just want the guy. I wish. Boxingboys.com. Yes, obviously. I'm the hipster. Haters beware. Uh, We got Canelo and Chavez this weekend. Uh, arguably the biggest fight of the year so far. You know, it's up to this fight or Anthony Joshua Klitschko uh, and back-to-back weekends. I think that's great for the sport overall. Just a lot of eyeballs on the sport. Uh, Ness, you sent us a link uh, earlier this morning about how just Google searches overall for boxing are up over 350% this past month. Um, So the sport's booming. Uh, Whether or not the merits of this fight stand, whether or not this is a credible fight, whether or not this is a mismatch, uh, I think at this point no longer matters because we have to address the fight itself, and it's a mega fight. So can't wait to chop it up with everyone. Definitely a mega fight. Well, we we got a bunch of uh, co-hosts with us today, so let's head on out to the Garden State. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah I just want to say I said fuck Stay focused. Uh, stay working, my man. Nice fight. <laughs> yes, yes. It's Thursday. Welcome to the big show, the most prolific podcast. Boxing heads, applaud Nesta Gibbs and Matt Hunter. These guys are constantly researching day and night. Um, we are on a on a on a messaging thread, and uh, it's all. I sometimes I wake up. 
sometimes I wake up to like 200 text messages and great boxing news before everybody hears it. So yeah, Canelo and Julio Cesar Chavez finally is here. Cinco de Mayo weekend, um, uh, casual fans weekend indeed. Uh, so tears up. We got we got predictions. We got opinions. And uh, Emmanuel Taylor is fighting right, and uh, that's a hardcore fight right against Matisse, uh, who everybody like the casual fans know that Danny Garcia beat him. And we also got David Lemieux. So you got a lot on the plate. Uh, let's get it going. What's up, everybody? Boxing Voice. I'm happy to be here. Man, what can I say that hasn't already been said? We got so much to talk about. And just like how Golden Boy is literally just unleashing their entire stable, you know, all the fighters they got. You know, it's a big boxing weekend, so we unleashed all the co-hosts. All the co-hosts we got. We're all here. We're ready to talk boxing. I'm excited. Well, there's definitely a lot of excitement, man. Fight week, Las Vegas is out in full effect. Sean Zatel and Samantha Sanchez on hand covering this one for us. Um, we're going to get right into it. I mean, the main event, Canelo's moving up 10 and a half pounds. Uh, Chavez is coming down a couple of pounds. Uh, some might say three and a half. Some might say more since it's been so long since he's fought at 68. I mean, some of the rumors going around, there's no way in yet. Obviously, that's tomorrow, Matt, but I've been hearing people say that Chavez already looks weight drained. What is your opinion of the photos that you've seen? Does he look weight drained to you so far? He definitely looks gaunt in the face. Um, I think if we're doing it purely from the eye test, and when you're talking about like weight draining, it's very different than like, oh, is someone on steroids? You can really tell, uh, judging off the eye, judging off their body, if they look weight drained. And I think Chavez is looking like that. And again, the biggest, uh, most brutal part of his weight cut is tonight. It's in the morning. It's not uh, what's been happening in the past weeks. It's it's right now. So he's going to get even worse before he gets better, uh, before we see him tomorrow morning at the weigh-in. So I think, obviously, that is a huge element to this fight. And it's one that, obviously, we see is going to have an effect in the fight. How much of an, of an effect in the fight, I think everyone is up to their own opinion on that. Because um, I know some people are going to view it as just something that he's going to be able to get over. Um, but I, I don't know. I think this is a very big uh, obstacle for Chavez. Yeah, can I chime in on that? Um, I saw his face. To me, he looked healthy. He didn't look weight drained, exhausted, skeletal. You know, Jesus Christ carrying the cross. But um, what 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 does that what does that do for him? You know, once he has that meal after the weight and drinks that 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 pity a light you know what i'm saying what happens to him does he balloon up because chavez to me i mean not chavez canelo to me on the other hand he looks um like you know he's just a normal guy walking around at, a, at his normal weight so what what does that drainage do once to connect to code uh to chavez's weight once he starts eating steven what, what, what's your opinion on uh chavez i mean I, i'm sure you've been busy head buried in those books um when you took a, a second to breathe and you start started to see these new photos of uh, Chavez surfacing, what were your initial thoughts? Yeah, what's your uh, that's that's definitely my biggest concern is the weight loss. But to tell you the truth, even though it's the biggest concern and the, the most circulated kind of story, it seems coming out of that camp, I'm going to not put as much stock into it. And I'll tell you why. If you've been following Chavez Jr. on Instagram as long as I have, which has been, you know, the last like three or four years, you will know that that guy literally has probably been training for this fight in particular for the last like two years. The guy, as far as I can see, is always working, always working, even times when he had long layoffs and wasn't in fights. I'm like, wow, this guy's still working. I got to give him credit because he's doing what other fighters probably wouldn't do. So I think he's been trying to get down to this lower weight. I think he's been trying to do that Sean Porter method of – getting in shape and staying around that that desired weight class year round. So if you look back at his last fight against Dominic Birch, he made the weight no problem, 168 pounds. Um, or at least he was on on a, for the for the fight. So I think that nah, I get that. Come on, Matt. Don't start. It's too Matt, early. Matt, come on, bro. You overdo it with this fucking sad song. Like everybody is a sad song for you. Or oh, laughter. If you think about it, he weigh, he came in on he came in on point for that weight, right? And that was in 2016. He's kind of only been fighting like once or twice a year. I think it's because he has just been focusing on getting in the gym, putting in the work. 
And if he, he hasn't been taking as much punishment since that knockout loss. Usually when guys come from a bad knockout loss, they take fights um, and, and we see a slow decline. We haven't seen that. He's been spoon-fed opponents, you could argue that, and I have no argument against that. But he's also been coming in on weight and he's been uh, doing what he needs to do in there. And I'm, I'm going to say that because he was, what, 166 at the beginning of the week, I want to say? How, how, how heavy? I believe I heard... I haven't even been following his weight. I know he got on the scale for people the other day. I seen him. I, I didn't check. Too, I know you're under 170 uh, flying into Vegas. I know no, that. Because I was, I was chopping up with my girl about it because, I, I, you know, she's like a nutritionist. I was like, babe, so what's up? This guy's, you know, how is his weight? And she's like, well, if you think about the fact that a week out, he's only got to drop about three or four pounds, that's really, really good. Or two, I, I'm telling you, I'm pretty confident it's 166. So he only has to drop like two pounds. I don't think that it's going to be as tough cutting it overnight tonight as some may suspect. I think that I, I didn't think it was going to be, be okay. Tough. I didn't I, think it was going to be tough either simply because he got so close to the last way and the last guy was a a nobody. You know, he got motivated for a nobody. How the hell can't he get motivated for someone like Canelo Alvarez is what I thought. But um casual, the next question obviously is for you. Uh coming into this face off, the, the first time that they face off in a long time Chavez is significantly bigger than Canelo. Um, as a casual fan, what sort of advantages do you think that is going to give Chavez, if any? Um, I, you mean bigger in, in like size? I, 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 my immediate reaction was that he's going to not be as nimble as he looked against Cotto, and that is um, Canelo I'm talking about. So I'm hoping, because I'm going to go early with this, I'm hoping, you know, I'm a casual fan, so... I, I wish for the best for the underdog and the healthiest worse for the top dog. Um, I'm hoping that 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 Chavez is able to look really good and expose Canelo a little bit. Um, I don't know if um, he's going to have that one punch knockout power and produce a knockout, but he could pro probably produce some respect and, and we'll see it on, on a fight night. So I'm thinking that the advantage is, you know, he's he's more refreshed. That's what I'm saying. When he gets more up to his uh balloons back up to his way after the Peter light that he's going to be he's going to be easy on his feet and, that, and that's what I'm hoping for the advantages for uh, Chavez nothing to do with the size huh Matt <laughs> what size I said from the it hipster's too. perspective how much of that height um is going to come into play on fight night because I like to say that Chavez gives up his height anyway 100% 100% he gives up his height he doesn't have a jab at all Look at all of his fights. He has a non-existent jab. That's not even a <laughs> plan. Uh, two, his best work is on the inside. So he is giving up his his size uh, and his height and his reach when a guy like Canelo. He wants to get on the inside and, and, bru and brutalize him to the body. That's his game plan, hopefully, in this fight. That's his only path to victory. But that So it, his height is not going to equal anything for him. If anything, it's actually going to help Canelo being the smaller man on the inside having the faster hands. Kaz, you look real sexy over there. So, hold on. I just want to disagree with Matt real quick. Matt, I, you said that he his jab is like non-existent in any of his fights. I think if you look back at his best performance, which was against Andy Lee, the jab was definitely existent there. In fact, you. I remember him against Andy Lee back in 2012. So, I mean, he probably had a jab in that fight, Stephen, but we all know that his style was more of a, a bruiser, right? I'm, coming I'll this way. Look at any fight he has against a guy with a jab. He doesn't use a jab. Look at well, look at the fight with Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez jabbed him to death, and Chavez had no answer for it. He had no head movement. He so can't the ring at hey, all. So you, hey, so so you think, think if he did have a jab, jab, he'd have a big chance against a Canelo? Hey, I think, think if he had a jab, he'd have a much better chance. One hundred percent. FYI, the hipster went back and watched these fights. All right, he's hot. Like he I was, was bored today, so I watched just, a bunch of fights. He was just in the lab today. So, you know, his eyes are bleeding. Dre. His eyes are bleeding from all the tape he's watched. Um, so so hipster, let's put the you know, put the hot seat on you. We'll put you in the hot seat. Who are you I going for? Seat. I'm going Canelo, man. I I'll put it this way. Oh, so it was all lies all oh, fit, Of course huh? it was, man. I was I was just ah. I was gassing you up. Don't worry about it. Uh I think that Canelo obviously has some footwork issues that he needs to address to help his career and help his overall game. And if you look at Fighters who really gave Chavez the most issues, like a Sergio Martinez, it was because of his footwork. Sergio Martinez was able to dance around him. Chavez wasn't able to cut off the ring. 
I think Travis is going to have a lot more success cutting off the ring against the much more flat-footed Canelo. However, Canelo's head movement is on another level than Sergio Martinez. His hand speed is on another level than Sergio Martinez. His power is on another level than Sergio Martinez, in my opinion. So I think that at whatever distance that this fight is taking place, whether it be at long range, Canelo's going to have the better jab. He's going to have the straight-up punches. If this fight's fought inside on in the clinch, I think Canelo may be the stronger guy, definitely the more muscle-bound guy. And he definitely has the sharper hands. And I think him being the smaller guy on the inside is going to be an advantage to him. So you t- you're taking away the best possible path of victory for Chavez. Unless Chavez can grind him down and really absorb the punishment and somehow wear down Canelo throughout 10 rounds, 11 rounds, and get a late round finish or late five finish, there, I don't see a way of Chavez, A, winning enough rounds to win a decision, or B, really even knocking him out. Chavez, I mean, Canelo has had an amazing chin. He has taken a lot, a lot of good shots and has held up. So I, I don't see a clear path of victory in the way that Chavez can, I can be assured or positive that he's going to win. I, I can, I can see one, but it's a maybe it's an if, if he can do this for all 12 rounds. And I don't think he can. Ash. Who am I picking? Um, I told you, man, I'm picking um, Chavez jr. Um, yeah, he's disciplined, like you guys were saying. He took the fight before this one's very serious. Of course, he's taking Canelo serious. Of course, he hates Canelo. You saw him, he just spoke straight up English. I was hoping uh, on the face off, I was hoping for a scar face moment. And when Canelo was like, me vaya no I was hoping, you know, that <laughs> you remember that part in Scarface, like, hey, who you think you're talking to? Huh? A fucking still boy? You want to go to war? Take you to war. I was hoping for that. <laughs> And I think that's what's gonna happen on Saturday night. I think he's gonna go to war immediately with him and, and use his 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 size advantage against everything you guys said, Matt. Um, and you know, I'm hoping that it does not end up like Kirkland. So I'm picking Can- uh, Chavez Jr. You know, Matt. I mean, you were so fucking long winded. I was trying to get up in there with you because Canelo, he's good coming forward. But what if, like Steven said, we get that version, and I know this is going in the bag. Look, I'm, this is it's a radio show. We got to talk. So it's going in the bag <laughs> saying that Chavez is going to be the same version of him that was in the Andy Lee fight, and, and he makes it a tough for, fight where he is coming forward. I mean, Canelo is a counterpuncher at times, but he isn't the best on the back foot, especially with True. some pressure in his face. So, And he know, often goes to the ropes when he shouldn't be. Hopefully, Chavez doesn't allow Canelo to set the pace. He he crouches down so low, and he kind of like dips off to the side, but he's is so slow that he gets jabbed on the way in so much. And, uh, yeah, man, Canelo likes to use the uppercut a lot. So, you know, I just hope Chavez doesn't get blinded with a few jabs and a big uppercut, and it's over. But it would look beautiful if Canelo could do that. He he just looks so much smaller in height, man. But again, you know, Chavez ducks. Steven, what, what, how are you looking at this one? I think that this is going to be one of those fights where in the first couple of rounds, you're going to be able to predict what's going to happen in the rest of the fight. I think that I don't understand what people are expecting like a big war. I think it's going to be a boring fight. And to tell you the truth, I think the more the slower pace that it, that it is, the better it is for Chavez. Um, you, I agreed with what you had said before. Canelo doesn't really fight well backing up. And what they both do, they both have this tendency to kind of turn off in the middle of the round. They both do that herky-jerky, you know, head movement thing. You saw Chavez do it a lot whenever he's – and they both do it because they're both usually the, the, the physically superior guy in the ring uh, compared to any other opponent they fought. I don't think I've ever seen Canelo versus a bigger opponent ever. And uh, Chavez, he's always the bigger guy. So I think he's going to be the one in a more comfortable position. I think that if he goes – the difference between him and like a, a Liam Smith, when Liam Smith went to the body, Canelo didn't feel it. I think when Chavez goes to the body, Canelo will feel it. And the difference also being that, let's not forget, Chavez Jr. got knocked out by Fanfara, but yeah, that was up at light heavyweight. I think that at this weight, you know, like barely uh, somewhere between middle and super middle, I think that his chin's going to hold up against a Canelo. I think that he's going to be able to withstand a lot of Canelo's earlier punches, and I'm hoping for um, Canelo to – to just be looking to land one shot. You look at his training, Matt, you brought up the speed. Canelo hasn't, I don't really see him focusing on speed. And you see him in fights, he's, he only throws combinations when he gets you hurt. He's a great finisher, tremendous finisher. But in terms of you know, putting you in that spot, he waits, he sits and he waits. And I think that's what's gonna be his downfall. I'm picking Chavez Jr. 
One thing you no, notice with Canelo is that he, he tells fans. This guy's picked an upset, though. Didn't you pick an upset last Thursday and not come back Sunday? I was oh. not on last Thursday. Thank you very much. I was studying. Thanks for reminding me. He picked uh, up. So all right, so that means you weren't you didn't make a pick. No, he did pick an upset. What was it? What was that big upset you picked that you you, you found upset. out? You pick an upset. You picked uh, an upset. And you ain't eat no crow. I know that. You go over here picking up crow anyways. He picked Berto. Yeah. No. Yeah. Did you? Berto? No, I picked Porter. Fuck that. I love Porter. There's no way I would have picked against Porter. I love Porter. I pick. I'll pick the underdog if if I hate on the on the A Hatley? side. You picked Hatley, didn't you? Yeah, I picked Hatley because I hated on Charlo. Because I hated on Charlo. That's right. Yeah, you can give me crow for that right now. I'll take that. Give me that crow. Mm-hmm. Extra hot sauce. <laughs> on a Thursday. Mm. Mm. On a Thursday. So Lucas Matisse is back, man. I'm not as excited. Hold on, bro. Ness, I gotta write mark down. Who did you pick? Um Ness doesn't pick. You trying to trying to duck? He might call, be call him the non-picker. Hey, look who it is. It's Doomy Doomy Doomsday. <laughs> <laughs> I need a sparring partner. Let me see. Hey, yo, Kai, hey, yo, what's up, man? You still living in Mexico? Yeah, hey, he shirt. called you a sparring partner. Ah. <laughs> yo. That wasn't the listen. Day. Matisse is back, man. But um, to be honest, I'm not as excited as I once was when the name Matisse was thrown around. Back in the day, Cash, we used to get excited when we heard Matisse was fighting. Now I'm like, yo, whatever. Right. So what you're saying, that he can't give you a good fight still? Damn, I'm saying you just all jumped right in front of that car for casual. Like, give him a fine for that, man. <laughs> yo, so, I, yeah, I'm, I yo, was... Guys, turn me up in the headphones. You're a little low over there talking to the mic. Yo, I, what I was saying was... Matisse's <laughs> opponent, Matisse's opponent, um, Emmanuel was what's his name? Emmanuel Taylor. Taylor. Emmanuel Taylor. That's I was right. we're gonna have him on at nine o'clock. Yeah, well, I was excited, like, damn, I know that name, Emmanuel Taylor. Who did he fight before? And then I went to his resume. I was like, damn, maybe about Bill Brona. That's where I know his name. But then before that, I didn't know he fought a Chris Algieri or Kareem Mayfield. Yeah, I was at that fight. He fought Chris Algieri in Huntington, too. It was at Chris Algieri's home. It was like, I don't know, five people there. Yeah, uh, he lost to to good opponents. I think you know Antonio yeah. Orozco is pretty good too. And then I don't know, um, you know, Orozco's decent, man. I'm not sold on Orozco yet. He's still a bit of a just a grinder in I'm my not opinion. Sold on him either. We've seen yeah. upsets against Matisse, so uh, you know, it could it could be a, a Matisse upset. Like who, like who upset him? Uh, Danny Garcia, Victor uh, Postal, Victor Postal lately. Nobody was expecting that one. No one was expecting that one. I mean, oh shit, I called that one. Go listen to the playback. That was his comeback. Super man. That Yo, look what I got. Look what I got. Right in theme. I didn't know I had this. Sorry, Cash. Right here, Joe. What are you, Cash? Come on. How are you feeling? Stop, stop it. Stop the fight. Let's get out. Let's I'm done. Breathe, breathe. Stop the fight. Stop it. Stop it. I want to stop. Mm. Who was that? That was? No. Oh, Matisse against Victor Postal. Nah, that was the corner audio last time Chavez wanted to stop. Oh, shit. Oh, who he fought? <laughs> from far. That was when he fought from far. That was really embarrassing. I felt bad for him. Who was in his Goosen. Goosen was in his corner, right? And yeah. uh, I felt bad because, because you know, Goosen, he doesn't really let his fighters, like, go out like that. You know, he had Chico Corrales where he was, like, giving them, you know, spinning out the mouthpiece shit and like getting him back in that fight so when chavez i like, kind of quit on his stool and then after blamed it on like a knee injury and like, i remember that being like a really awkward moment you look at goosen's face back in that like he's kind of looking around like uh, uh it was an awkward moment for the guy and you're betting on that guy huh stevie has anyone heard the radio yeah. announcement for the canelo chavez fight anyone i heard one yeah, yeah I, I heard one we actually, we actually got the tape um doomsday what up he? Don't you got the Spanish audio for the Canelo Chavez promo? I heard the English version, and it was it was fighting. They are fighting for the crown of the king of New York, uh, king of Mexico. <laughs> king of New York. <laughs> <laughs> Mexico title. Yo, we're peleando for la corona de Mexico. The king of Mexico. Yo, where, the, the Julia Chai. How, how's, where are they? De la tribu de las montañas de la Sierra Madre de Mexico. Julia Chol. No, and he from what? The Hualalajara, Hualisco, 
Jalisco. Guadalajara. I love the way that they roll that one. Guadalajara, uh, Jalisco, Mexico. Uh, listen, I'm like Cash for real. I, I was a little bit happy um, because I at least know Emmanuel Till. I know he gives up a good fight, but you know, I'm I'm thinking to myself, you couldn't beat Chris Algieri. Now, yeah, that was a prime Chris Algieri. That was Chris Algieri before rules line. You know, all the speed, none of the punishment, but none of the power. You know, and then he had Broner on the ropes, and he did it. I was live at that fight, too. Emmanuel Taylor, man, I've been putting in miles to watch you fight. You know, I was all the way in Cincinnati to watch him with the Broner fight, and he was doing good. But then he got dropped with that um, uppercut. Now, look, Broner obviously can punch. He's put down bigger guys. He's he's hurt, you know, more popular guys. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if Matisse happens to be back, I don't understand how Taylor can deal with that power. But um, I guess it's a two-part question to, to whoever wants to jump in first. Do you feel that uh, Taylor can deal with the power? And do you feel that we still get that same version of Matisse? Or is this going to be a fragile, more timid uh, version of him? I'll be honest. I have no idea. When we have a guy like Matisse who had an eye injury in his last fight, and eye injuries are, are super dangerous in boxing, um, have the huge layoff and then fight a guy like Emmanuel Taylor, who's also sort of over the hill in a way. I, I really don't know what to expect of this. I think it's a it's a quality matchup. I think both these guys are relatively at the same point in their career. Um, I think it's it's not a mismatch in any way, but I just really don't know who to pick in this fight. This is a pick and fight to me. I may go Matisse just because because of the name value and he's done better things recently. But again, I I don't know. This is this is one of those fights where we don't know beforehand, but we're gonna know a lot afterwards. I, I like. Uh, fight. Go ahead, Stephen. I'll go. Listen, I I like this fight. As soon as I saw both names and I looked up Emmanuel Taylor, I was thinking to myself like, "Yo, this might be the upset night, or this might be the great Matisse night." So I have a feeling this is gonna be the exciting fight on the card. You know, uh, of course, um, yeah, we'll probably see one knockout, and then, then we'll see a war with this one. And who knows what we'll see against Chavez and Canelo. I can't pick Lucas Matisse because the guy not only quit in his last fight, but he literally retired and he stepped yo, away yo, from yo, the yo. Look at the pot calling the kettle black. He can't pick Matisse for quitting, but he's picking Chavez for quitting. That wasn't Chavez's last fight. That wasn't, that wasn't, Ch that wasn't Chavez's favorite. last fight. That's not Chavez's <laughs> last fight. That's not Chavez's last fight. You didn't it's listen okay, to what I said. I can't, pick, I can't pick him because he quit in his last fight, and then he retired. Chavez didn't retire after. He didn't say he wanted no more boxing. He was gone for months before they finally convinced him to come back and get back into the gym. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that he, like, he was going to do a comeback fight and then called that one off. And then has finally decided they had to drag him back in. To me, that's a fighter who's debating whether or not he wants to do this. I got you. Chavez going into this fight knows that he wants this. And this is the only fight Chavez really needs to win in his whole career to really uh, uh, vilify him. It's a, it's a, yeah, I, there you go. I, and I and live up to his name. Than Chavez, you know it. Okay, but I'll say this. Emmanuel Taylor is probably a better boxer than Lucas Matisse because the only person I ever seen Lucas Matisse outbox was Ruslan Pravodnikov. Other than that, he's the one who's been outboxed. And if you consider the fact that there's both of their fight at 147 and Matisse is coming off with a longer layoff, I'm going to say that he's going to be the one with more ring rust and Emmanuel Taylor is going to get off to an earlier start. So what's going to happen when Lucas Matisse gets frustrated? Right. I, I quitting things come back in the no, head. Well, they're both moving up. Yeah, when, when Chavez you know, is going to face adversity, he's going to want to quit too. You know, when you when you have that mental, nope, nope, when you, you're when wrong. You you're wrong. Where you have done it more than once, or at you're least wrong. once in your career, it becomes a trend. Then it's more easy for you that to happen. Come on, we see it in the combat sports all the time. No, nope, I think, I think they're wrong. Go out, they go out, get pressed. Out. They can't press back. Those, those fighters are not those fighters aren't, aren't fighting for national pride. Those fighters aren't fighting for national pride, and they're not fighting for a namesake. None of those fighters that you're going to bring up to to use examples. Lucas and Matisse guys, is fighting for his namesake. If you don't think yeah, that, but he's not. He's wrong. not fighting. Mano Taylor's fighting for his namesake. No. If you don't think that, you're then you're not wrong. the way Chavez is. Not the way Chavez is because they don't have a name to live up to other than yeah, the, no, the, no, the no, no, career. No, no, that no, no, all fighters have that mentality of like I no, want to be the best. It's different for Chavez. On this one, Matt. It's different for Chavez, bro. Like I'm telling you, Chavez. We gotta watch him after this, man. We gotta watch him after this because if he doesn't win, it could get really ugly, bro. The, he could spiral into like. You know, long nights of 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 fucking 
alcohol and drugs because he's going to shame his father, bro. It's like, you know, he's the Mexican with the name and, and Canelo is like the self-made one. So if he wins, bro, he's really the people's champion, man. Like everyone knows that Chavez is the son of. Right. You know, he's got a you know how hard it must have been to live in that shadow coming up, bro. He could never do any right. And now he's on the grandest stage. Yeah. Yo, so the, he signed the contract. He asked for it. I, I, I'm not gonna pity him. So who do you think is more he, 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 he wants to be in this position? Matt, 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 listen first. I'm not asking you to pity. I'm just saying you can at least understand what Steven is saying when he says that Chavez has a name. And I, he's, I'll put it this way. Do you, I'm going to ask all you guys this question. Is Chavez a quitter? Yes or no? He has quit before, but I don't think he'll quit on this one. This is the one with the name rides the king, the prince of Mexico, who wants to take the crown. So the answer is no, he is not a quitter. He's he he's not gonna quit on this one. He's gonna okay. have to get knocked out. Yes or no? I, I, I hope he goes out on his shield like that. I gave you point coins for that one, uh Enrique, because I agree. Because I agree. I don't think that he's gonna quit on this. This isn't this is like I said, this is the fight of his life. This is the yeah. fight of his life. This is the one fight he needs to win. And it's a winnable fight. This guy is not as big, not as strong. But he's know. light years better. Martinez be Martinez quiet. beat him with activity. Fanfara beat him with activity. Canelo does not the the one who's gonna be pressing the fight and leading. Canelo's a better boxer than both those guys combined. He's a better sit back and watcher. That's what he is. He's a better boxer, too. He is a guy that likes to sit back. Listen, let's get back to Taylor. I'm going Taylor too, man. I think Matisse. Listen, I've picked against Matisse with, with with Lamont. You know what I mean? But um, I think Stephen convinced me. I was actually gonna pick M Matisse on a comeback, but Stephen convinced convinced me because I also forgot that they're moving up, man. So Lucas, I mean, he's never even fought in that division, but it's good matchmaking by Eric Gomez by matching him with another 140 pounder moving up. But it's like Stephen said, this guy, you know, he um, he's been working, you know, uh, unlike. Unlike, uh, you know, Lucas, who's been out. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Transformers. And on the undercards, I'm going with Joseph Diaz, Gamboa, and David Lemieux. I, I, I wish them all the best. I hope they all look good. I, I know Diaz is now calling out Valdez. I mean, how's that got to feel, right? Same uh, Olympic class, and this kid's already a champion. Positioned easily to be a champion, too. Like, different roads. Not to say that Joseph Diaz Rose was any tougher. He just hasn't looked as good as Valdez. To be honest with you, Valdez looks like a little force, especially with the left hook. It's the power. I mean, Oscar Valdez produces knockouts. Uh, Joseph Diaz is a uh, cute boxer without really that pop. Yeah, I got to agree. Joseph Diaz has to fight harder to get his wins than Valdez has had to. I I I want to I want to look at this video for some reason. Tony Weeks just sent me a video, and I'm like, Psst. you know, fuck. Tony Weeks texts you. You want to see what the hell the video is? But like, sorry, can't do it right now. Um, so Tyson Fury, man, talk to me here, hipster. What's the what's the dilly with Tyson Fury? When's he going to court? Is it court? Is it a what is it, a hearing? A hearing, and it's only from a, a quote from Frank Warren. He said that after May 8th, uh, his situation is going to be figured out, uh, him and Harry Furies. So that alludes to the hearing actually being on May 8th. So that's good. We actually have a date to where hopefully that issue gets some sort of resolution. Wh whatever way it falls, I don't care. I just want resolution because that's been hanging over the Fury cousins for, what, 12 months now at least? So it's May 8th. After that, we should know more about what the UCOD situation is with the alleged uh, steroid uh, allegation. Any other headlines? I mean, I have really nothing to add to the Fury other than uh, that he's keeping me entertained with his uh, social media. You know, um, he's he's promising to lose like 18 pounds, right? Yeah, and he, that's what he said on his uh, Instagram. 118? Did he say 118? No, 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 18. Damn, 18, but he looks like he's like at 350. He said he had lost 18 pounds already. Oh, okay. So I was about to say, um, need and to it, there's one quick news I wanted just to address. You know, we really don't have to dwell on it because it is a heavy topic, and you know, I want to keep the show light. It's a fight week and everything. 
Uh, but Pritchard Cologne's family has filed a lawsuit against uh, the doctor who was on the scene and uh, his promoter of the fight. Uh, I believe the lawsuit was for $50 million. Um, we're going to see where that goes. Obviously, we're going to try to keep you guys updated on, on that since it is sort of a big news and it could be precedent setting. Um, but just thoughts and prayers go out to Pritchard Cologne, of course, and always, uh, you know, we hope he always gets better and we uh, just hope the best for him. Is that Lou DiBella, the promotion? DiBella. I wonder because it was, wasn't it the Felix Diaz fight? Yeah, that was Lamont yeah. Felix Diaz, and then yeah. Hmm. Is that I'm I'm combing through the article. I don't see Lou's name. Oh, it is Wednesday. That Ashby has no comment. An inside at Ashby's in Washington D.C. Family Medical Practice told Outside the Lines Wednesday that Ashby has no comment. Lou DeBella, CEO of DeBella Entertainment, said he had not seen the lawsuit and could not comment on it, but that what happened to Pritchard was a tragedy and we are deeply saddened by it. A, a message left for Headbangers promotion has not been returned. I wonder, I thought, I, yeah, oh, wow, that's um, 50 million, huh? Yeah, I mean, we could address it in the way of like, if there was any malpractice on either the promoter side or the doctor side or the commission side in terms of uh, handling him post fight or pre fight or stuff like that, or during the fight, then there is definitely legitimacy to this case. Um, but from just from what I've seen, I don't know if there's any validity to this case. That's my did personal you, opinion about it. Did you read the ESPN article that was put out right when his pictures surfaced of him in his bed, you know, with his family? Yes, all right. In that, in that same article, there was um, um, something saying that uh, Pritchard, when he was in the corner, he did say he felt dizzy to the referee and that once you feel dizzy they usually stop the fight it so, could be it could be a bleed they said yeah so, they, they're gonna need I don't, I don't remember that but i'll, I'll read that again and read as, it. He, as he said she said regardless they're gonna need audio to prove that yeah yeah they will but i'm just saying that could be it that could be the mound practice right there on the referee's behalf yes but the referee was not named in the suit yeah, but then he he's supposed to relay that information to a doctor, and then the doctor comes and examines you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but just for example, if the doctor, if that was not relayed to the doctor. Well, the referee pulls the, the fight into the, the corner. The corner, then the yeah, doctor but, comes to the corner, and then they check you out. That's how it works. I mean, from what I'm reading, it says that the suit further asserts that the co-promoters headbanger and headbangers boxing, which is uh, Barry Hunter and, you know, the Petersons, and the Bella Entertainment were negligent because they did not provide a physician with necessary qualifications. Now that would be interesting. And competence. That's a little different to yes, put on to the promoter. Um, you I, like if a physician's there, I guess you have to take that up with whoever, whatever state license. It would be the state athletic commission, state, not the promoter. Uh, yeah. When a lot of, a lot of things like this were happening in. Um, New York, and I remember Thomas Hauser writing like a three series uh, yeah. in depth kind of breakdown over the Nevada State Athletic Commission and like the internal investigation that started going on because of uh, remember Meg uh, Megomed, right? That was his name. Yeah, uh, the heavyweight who had fought um, uh, or see or my prayers. It's right. So I think that from what I've read, for, based on that, Thomas Hauser, you know, he was an attorney. Or maybe probably still is still practices. I'm sure, not quite sure, but he knows what he's talking about. He knows his stuff. He's the guy who does all the due diligence and the correct research. And from what I've read, based on that, it usually is up to the state athletic commission to provide the uh, physicians that are ringside and any other type of um, officials that would be around the ring to say that it's up to the promoter. I think is kind of a stretch. I mean, just yesterday alone, we did a show where we learned that the WBC provides officials, judges, refs, everything. So. Look, I mean, uh, it's a bit of a stretch, but I understand where the Cologne family is coming. You know, it's a very saddening story. Uh, personally, for me, you know, I knew this kid personally and interviewed him numerous times. He was all over the tri-state area. You know, um, we were good friends. I mean, he he would wear our shirt. He would just, you know, he was he was amazing. You know, he was one. I, I talked about him all the time because he was one of the first Puerto Rican born. Al Heyman signed guys. What's uh I mean in situations like this, you would figure someone would, you know, like they could scrape up a couple of mil with all the millions flying around in boxing. You know, I'm not saying that the kid deserves 50, and I'm not saying that he doesn't, 
But I'm just saying, like, amongst that boxing circle, there's a lot of million dollars. And that's, I mean, I've heard rumors about Al Heyman basically paying for all the medical bills and stuff like I that. I thought that, you know, I didn't I that was basically that. fact. I didn't know if that was rumors or fact. I, I, remember, I, I didn't want to well. say that because, you know, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the neighborhood fanboy, right, of, of, of Mr. Heyman. So, and, and there's no facts to prove that. So, I, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But listen. Any other headlines we need to touch, man? First and foremost, um, but our prayers are out with Rick Pritchard Cologne. We hope that uh things work out, you know. Obviously, um everything is in God's hands and uh, everything happens for a reason. I'm sure that uh he will make sure that, that Pritchard is uh provided for. Um, are there any yes. other topics that yes. we need to discuss? Definitely, we need to discuss uh Gamboa is fighting it tomorrow. Uh, Again, Robinson Castellanos. I, I uh, mentioned that Castellanos is the live dog. I said I was picking yeah, Gamboa, is. but but Castellano is I'm no picking Gamboa, but Castellanos is a live dog for sure. Just because yeah, Gamboa is Castellanos of anything, because he's that kind of a guy, like he's a grinder for sure. Jose Ramirez is fighting on Unamas. Uh we don't really need to dwell on that because it's kind of a bad fight, but Jose Ramirez is sort of a prospect at 140. Uh, and obviously we haven't even touched on it at all. And I'm surprised you have it, Ness. Joseph Parker versus Razvan. Cajono, whatever his name is, uh, out in New Zealand. You want you want to talk about that fight, Ness? Yeah. I know. So I mean, duck lipping it. He um, <laughs> it's a heavyweight fight. It's a heavyweight fight. You know, it's funny. Uh, Razvan, we've had him on the show a couple of times when he was in the Boxino tournament. Um, I went back and did my research. It wasn't um Andres Fedosov that knocked him out. Fedosov actually knocked out the guy that knocked out um Razvan. And that was a Donovan Dennis, man. But that was a good fight. Look, Razvan, I see, I, you know, again, I did my research. So he's like, oh, you know, the media, I don't know. I guess he heard the show or there's other people being as critical as I am. But look, man, I mean, he's Joseph Parker's sparring partner. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm just being fair, right? Like we give everybody shit when they take these short notice fights, we kind of want them to push their fights back, but they want to just get that training camp out the way. It's like busting a nut. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to stop in the middle. So it's like, fuck it. Let me just get this dude, get this over with and start all over again. You well, know, so it's also like you spend seven weeks of training. You have to pay somebody for that. You have to pay your trainers, you have to pay the gym fees, you have to pay your manager, you have to pay people during that time. And when you don't get that paycheck at the end, because the only guaranteed money after your fight is over, I, I, I don't fault guys for taking shit fights on a week's notice uh, for injury replacements. I, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. It's sort of something that we've accepted. Uh, as long as he takes a big fight afterwards, I don't care. Also, just the fact that he's staying active and isn't choosing to just remain inactive and letting a training camp go to waste. And he is giving his, because let's be real, over there in New Zealand, right? Who, what other heavyweight champion have they ever had? I'm sure they'll pay to watch him fight just about anybody and defend his title over there. So I think it's kind of, uh, from his standpoint, it's win-win across the boards as long as he wins. Yeah, you know, if he loses, that'd be embarrassing. I'm not trying to dwell here because we need to move on. But like, honestly, how difficult is it for you to say, "Oh, I was fighting fighter A, and now I got to fight fighter B"? When you, when you, when you ask to go from a Huey Fury to a Deontay Wilder, it's a fucking a lot. You're talking about a unification. You're talking about game planning for a specific fighter. You spend eight weeks not only getting in shape and honing your craft, but you're also setting a game plan up. You're working on that game plan, making sure that you're dialed in for that specific fighter. Of, and when you're at that caliber of a fight, you have to do that. And I think as fans, we want the guys to be in the best possible shape and the best possible condition when they take those big fights. Hey, do you remember after the David Lemieux fight, one of our, uh, somebody from TBV interviewed Willie Monroe and they asked Willie if he would be interested in, in a David Lemieux fight if it occurred on uh, the undercard of Canelo Chavez. And I remember Willie saying that like for that type of fight, he would have wanted, I think, more time. You go back and listen to the interview. He, didn't, he said he, that at May 5th, because this was in March when Lemieux had stopped Stevens. What are you looking at me like that for, Matt? I'm right. I'm not looking Go at you. I'm looking at, at Ness, dude. Do you not see what Ness is doing? He's doing the fucking limbo back there. <laughs> no, I'm saying that was me. That was me. I interviewed him. I went to the David Lemieux fight. Oh. <laughs> there you go. See? Go watch the Boxing Voice, everybody, on YouTube. Ness has killer videos. But Ness, so what do you think about that? That's one of our favorite fighters. I think coming on this panel. 
So if you consider that if someone like a William Monroe would not want to fight as someone like a David Lemieux on as much as two months notice, do you think that Joseph uh, Parker? The most second most feared middleweight in the middleweight division, Willie El Mangus Monroe, the slippery guy. Uh, after Rosado lost to Murray, where more many thought mm, Rosado won, he 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 posted a picture on his Instagram of he and Murray. Um, so real quick, just for shits and giggles, what would you think of uh, Murray versus uh, El Mangus? I think at this point, Murray is so past his prime, and Willie is looking better. So I, I pick. William Monroe, hands down, really, to win a decision. Not by knockout, but definitely to win a decision. I hope he wouldn't do that, because what does Willie have to gain from that? Nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. Absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. So Bro, I don't I like that fight at all. Not. I think that fight's oh. a waste of time. No, no, no. It's a waste no, of time. No no, no, no. You go over there, and you beat up Willie. I mean, you beat up um, Martin Murray soundly, a nice spanking in front of that UK public, and you become a, you know, an option for a, um, Billy Joe Saunders, you know, a maybe a, a Eubank if he decides to come back down, you know, maybe um, I don't know who else is there. Uh, is there an, isn't there an older Smith brother? So let me get this straight. None of these guys want to fight William Monroe now, but if he beats Martin Murray, they will. There's no logic behind that. Answer. I mean, not not that. Oh wow, like Martin is gonna turn him into a star, but I mean, it he it would be a fight in the UK where boxing is booming now. Steve, come on. I think, that, I think that those two champions, I think that because of the UK fan base, when the, if those two uh, champions, because technically um, Eubanks is a champion, IBO, I think whenever they fought, they're going to get a crowd. They don't really need, and uh, William Monroe's already a name. He already fought like the top in the division. William, it's not like beating Martin Murray's going to elevate his status in their eyes at all. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a, it's a waste of time fight. All right, so um, anything else, Matthew? Uh, I believe that is it. I mean, there's other prospects fighting this weekend, but I'm not going to bore you with that uh, hardcore hipster shit, you know? Mm, true, 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 true. Nobody wants to be bored with the hardcore hipster shit. <laughs> but um, quick thing about the uh, Joseph Parker Kohano uh, fight. Kohano is a has more than 300 amateur fights, man. No, forget those amateur fights. I watched them fight. I don't know, man. It's a hungry lion right there, bro. Have you, have you been, wait, hold, on, hold on, Alex. Have no, you ever somebody not him? to be underestimated. Like, hold on, Alex. Have you seen him fight? I seen. No, he highlight. sparred Joseph Parker though, so yeah. he does know him well. That's he, he sparred Joseph like two separate occasions. Um, yeah, and uh, a guy on Negro sparred sparred uh, Deontay Wilder. We know how that ended. No, no, <laughs> he no, he didn't. I don't remember that. Did he say that? I don't remember that. Yeah, because Wilder said that he had uh, gave um, uh, a guy a, a concussion and he thought that he was still concussed. Don't you have that interview? Oh, that, 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 that was Baby Miller. That was Baby Miller. You all, you all really? on. Really? I thought SoCal it was Kyle. You all on the SoCal side. You should be over there in Northern with Alex Lemon. Shout out to Alex Lemon putting in that crazy hashtag TBB road work. Check him out on Instagram at the Boxing Voice. Check out his videos on YouTube. He did interviews with uh, Danny uh, El Chapulín, not Colorado, but Chapulín, Valdivia, 14-0 uh, with about 10 knockouts. He's already uh, got a regional title. We got a great interview with him. You know, he's talking about the Charlos, talking about his time he spent with Canelo sparring. Um, he also put some road work in and went to go see uh, Calisto Kilo the Kid, a.k.a. Kilo the Kid Madera. Um, and, and, you know, he was and still is sparring with Andre Ward to be prepared for this, uh, you know, fight with Sergey Kovalev. And he has a fight set up for himself in, um, I think in August, um, you know, both guys signed the top rank and he also went to see George, no wrong names. It's not George. It's Gabriel, Gabriel Flores Jr. Uh, the youngest pro sign to top rank um superstar definitely in the making his pro debut is actually friday you know top rank situating him in reno uh right where all the action is hot in vegas so um you know alex gonna put in that road work he's also gonna be over there man so definitely a quick shout out to him 
for uh, doing what he needs to do. Also, we got a quick um, little special news bulletin. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, we've been able to partner up with another um, sponsor, right? Similar to El Camino, obviously someone that loves what we do and wants to, you know, help us do more of it. Uh, they're MI2 Promotions, and um, they're offering each one of our listeners an opportunity to get a personalized um, boxing charm. You know, it's it, it, not a really charm. It's like a necklace, you know, just like the Golden Gloves. The only thing you didn't win these, you know what I'm saying? TBV gave them to you. And that's right. I use the word gave because it's absolutely free. All you got to do is pay your uh, shipping and you can get it. So just click on uh, the boxingvoice.com right at the top. You'll see here on the banner. I'm sharing this on YouTube if you're watching. Um, and yeah, you know, just uh, fill it out. Get it absolutely free. Costs you nothing. You're supporting TBV, and you get some pretty cool boxing gloves. You know, just like if you won the golden gloves, you could get them in black, gold, or like a uh, silver metallic. I mean, look, Enrique, you definitely need it. You only sparred a couple rounds with me and Doomsday, but Doomsday won. He actually won a golden glove, so he got them. You might need one of those. I don't know. But uh, let's get out to those phone lines because we do have a jam-packed show. I know a lot of you guys are uh, dying to get your picks off, so a word from the sponsors. Before that, call it. Brought to you by El Camino Electrical Services, experts in electric vehicle charging stations. For consultations and turnkey installation, visit us at ElCaminoElectricalServices.com. Enrique, Enrique. I just wanted to say something because um, I heard this discussion a few weeks ago talking about how boxing is dead and how the heavyweight division had it back in the days and the era of today and everything. And then I just fumbled across an article, an old one, that said while Mike Tyson was incarcerated, Julio Cesar Chavez carried the sport of boxing. Now, fast forward, 2017, while everybody's still discussing the old era, we had like within eight weeks a phenomenal uh eight weeks of boxing we from from thurman garcia to porter berto to klitschko joshua and now canelo alvarez versus julio cesar chavez so the sport is definitely alive i just wanted to put that out there in the air hey uh now nah, you don't agree ness come on you always shift somewhere else you, you're doomsday. preaching to the choir bro do me doomsday what's this thing called again you said um that's uh la it's just it's just a, one of the one of the painted skulls uh, that celebrate El Dia de los Muertos. So, uh, so, 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 so it's that charm is on its Mexican shit then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a holiday, Dia de los Muertos. All right. Well, let's get out to uh, the callers. We're gonna go to Alden in Phoenix, Arizona. Alden, what's going on, brother? What's up, Nats? What's up, fellas? Uh, Nats, man. With this fight, I mean, you know why Canelo chose this fight. He chose this fight because he thinks Chavez is slow and because he thinks he ain't got no heart because he quit. But you made a point. He quit <laughs> a light heavyweight. Doesn't mean he's going to quit against 160. So, and I think uh, I think the fight the way he's going to go, I think, uh, can, honestly, I think Canelo's going to bring it to him, man. I think he's going to move a little bit, try to kind of fill him out, move him. And I think Canelo's going to try to take him out. I really do think that. I really do think that. But I'm going to go with my heart, man. I'm going to go with Chavez, man. I would love to see Chavez win. He's a bigger guy. He can take a punch. All you got to do is rush him. Rush, rush Canelo. Make this fight dirty. He ain't, ain't going to outbox Canelo. So what's the point of that? For, do the same thing he did with Sergio but, in the 12th round, but do it through round 1 through 12. And I got, uh, I think, is uh, Lemieux fighting, right? He sure it's, is. Um, so if I, he's, yeah, so I got Lemieux, and I got Batista against uh, Taylor. So that's all I got. That's, uh, I, I'm going to go with Chavez. He's easy to pick him out. All right, Alden. Well, Alden, our first caller with the upset for sure. Matthew or Steven, keep me posted if we got any ringers. We're going to go out to the United Kingdom. We got Blackface. Yeah, respect to everyone listening in the uh, past, present, and future. Uh, Ness, if you want to check your Skype private chat between me and you, um, I've got a... Uh, some information I want to pass to you. Yeah, but, I just um, read it. Can you email it? I'll give you the email in there, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, 
Well, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, it's kind of, um, in regards to the fight, um, I'm kind of surprised this fight, well, I didn't even realise it wasn't being held in Mexico. I thought a fight of this magnitude would have been held in Mexico. I'm kind of disappointed that it isn't. Um, but, yeah, I think Chavez Jr. is probably in the best shape of his life. People are saying to be in the best shape of his life, then he probably needs to kill himself in all honesty. He should be ready. He should be willing to fight. He should be, he should be in the best shape. He should be super fit. You know, it should be, you know, it should be a good old Mexican, um, you know, typical Mexican style, as they say. But I don't think Chavez has got any, it, Chavez Jr. has got it in him at all. I think Canelo's just a better fighter all around. I don't think there's anything that Chavez Jr. does better than Canelo at all. Um, I've got Canelo winning quite easily. I think it does. Maybe 500,000 pay-per-views, 400, between 400 and 600,000 pay-per-views. I think it does. I don't think it does anything more than that. If it was in Mexico, then maybe I'll start pushing for the, maybe close to a million. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it'll do a million now. Between 400 and 600,000. Um, Lucas Matisse, he kind of disappeared for a minute. I haven't really heard his name mentioned for a while. But um, here's a question for, for everybody. Is he, is he one of the best fighters ever to never, never win a world title? That's a question for um, you guys on the panel, so to speak. Hell uh, no, he ain't one of the best nothing. What's his biggest no, win? No idea. That's what I'm asking. No, I'm asking. <laughs> we overhyped him, bro. Not me, because I picked Peterson to beat him. You know what I'm saying? And I picked Danny to beat him. I just ain't <laughs> picked Postal to beat him. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just a quick run. I can see casuals up to his old tricks again. He's wearing a, uh, a sleeveless vest. <laughs> you look like my girlfriend's maxi pad man you need to start wearing those <laughs> but yeah man that's my call man the harder you work the luckier you get yo they always coming at cash dope man they, yo, they well, close... I don't comment when someone says imagination is is harder than uh, is way better than intelligence so yeah he just imagining shit you know <laughs> yeah blackface but i like you though you cool what a kanye west like rebuttal you look, I, you look like your name is Alfonso, but that's all good. Oh, who looks like Alfonso? Matt? Blackface. Matt, Matt looked like Tom Cruise in, in um, Risky Business. You better stop. Okay, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in agree with me and shit? Damn, Matt, they playing right now. Now you know what it feels like. I'm sorry, I was, Matt. I was actually looking at this article. They're just jealous, that's all. No. <laughs> hey, Enrique is just intimidated because there's a new director on the block. That's no, all. I had I had I had uh, Matt walk in front of us in the airport. I screamed Tom Cruise. He had a couple of people looking at him. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Matt, Matt, Matt did do his uh, directorial debut. I saw his work. It was kind of um, you know step step. What do they call that? Stop motion. I don't know. You sped it up or something. Ooh, yeah. I'm part of it. Yeah, yeah I did. Like, like yo, like, it, yo, but animation. What about the end though, where he he put it backwards though, like yeah, the beginning boom. backwards. You like that? Come on, that's a stitch back right there. Die movie, yo, yo, <laughs> yo. When he did that shit, I felt like I was watching uh, Step It Up. You know what I'm saying? In Atlanta, and it was that point. It was like, boom. You know what I'm saying? It was like, boom, BK, where you at? And I'm like, oh, yo, yo, when I you went, know how the crowd always in the side, like, oh. I went to the vet, right, and I asked the vet, yo, how many times you been bit by a dog? He said, yeah, in the beginning I did, but now I just know when the ears go and when they're about to bite me. So I just know when someone's an amateur, when they throw that reverse. Oh! So he can sniff it out. He sniffs it out. Ladies and gentlemen, yo, I have your attention. Matt, what the Damn. Damn, he got me right there. I can't. You know what? He is the big time director. He directs music videos, so he's right. I am the amateur. He's he's the pro. But he ain't but, gonna uh, but, but, but you know what? You know what? Give me that fancy equipment, Enrique. Give me. He ain't gonna see that in the cannon, though. Yo, how big was the camera I brought on set? Woo! Who said, Yo, Ness? Open the windows. Let's just act like Jesus is coming for us. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! We had a whole theme song. Jesus! We didn't go to the theme song. <laughs> Yo, I I'm gonna always remember that that Florida trip. Listen, let's get to some more callers. We're gonna go to Donald in California. Talk to us. What's up? Uh, turn that radio down. I got um. No, I had I had you guys on the, on my stereo so I could hear everything loud. I had to get it off. 
Um, Damn, that yeah, Jesus I mean, must have came through Canelo. like John Legend and shit. I, was I sounding like Miguel? Jesus! <laughs> That's how it was sound like he was performing. But, um, yeah, I got, I'm, I mean, I know Canelo is going to win. He might get like a late stoppage, like a 10th, 11th round stoppage. But on the other hand, it's like I can look at the possibilities that maybe Chavez is taking this so serious to where he's going to come in and say, I mean, but he got to come in there and he got he to gotta show some skill. He can't look how he looked in the far, far fight. And in the far, far fight, he looked so, so, so silly. He looked like an amateur coming in there fighting a the pro. He didn't, like, have no ability to what he was doing. And he can't do that with Canelo. He's going to have to come in here and do some serious fighting. My recommendations would be for him to fight Canelo from the outside because we know Canelo's going to try to go to the body on him. And that's probably how he's going to try to uh, get him out of there. But, um... So if Chavez has a good game plan to fight from the outside and keep Canelo from coming in on him, I mean, I don't know if he can, I don't know if he can do it 12 rounds though. I mean, cause I don't see Chavez, if Chavez wins, I don't see him winning by decision. If he wins, he would have to knock Canelo out. If he wins, I just couldn't see him um, getting a decision with uh, Canelo. But um, I think Matisse is, uh, I like Matisse. I've always liked him. I just hate the fact how he went out like that with Posto and stuff like that. And, you know, he lost to Garcia and stuff like that. I mean, I don't see um, Emmanuel Taylor being able to beat um, Matisse. And if Matisse is the Matisse that we know and that's coming in there with the same power that he's always had in most of his fights, you could be looking at a stoppage on that fight right there, you know, you never know, you know, is he going to come in there and be Matisse or is he going to come in here and look like he should have stayed retired? So you don't think that that eight year age difference is going to matter too much because Matisse is eight years older than Emmanuel, you know, is, is, is Lucas looking like he has some tear wear and tear in the last fight that he looks slower. He's been out the ring for a long but, time and I, I don't even think age has anything to do with it because of the skill. Nah, yeah, that's right. It doesn't because you know what? Because you have to realize Emmanuel Taylor is not a, a, a super elite level fighter either anyway. And that's why this is a good comeback fight for um, for Matisse because Taylor is not a super elite, but he's a very good competitive fighter. So if he can get past him, then that might put him in a position where he still might want to work with Matisse. But if Matisse loses this, he should just retire. Damn, but what the, that's not fair because then what if what if it's just Taylor's best night and he and he did what he had to do? Real, I don't know. I mean, do you think that Taylor on his best night? Well, I, yeah, I could say that maybe oh, Taylor's best night could be it's Matisse over, on his baby. worst it's night. It's over. You still punching after the bell, man. You trying to hurt your opponent? Classic. Hey, yo, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's important to note that uh, Emmanuel Taylor has not been stopped, even though he has these four losses. No one has stopped him. I guess you could argue the one who's come closest would be Adrian Broner when Broner dropped him. And what was it? Uh, just I think that was like the hands go. If he if he's not gonna let his hands go, if he's gonna fight like he did in the Broner fight, because that's what what happened in the Broner fight. Like he could have won. Everybody knows Broner is a paced fighter, and if you push the pace, you make him uncomfortable. And he 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 kind of gassed, in my opinion. We'll see what he has to say when we get him on. We're gonna have him on at nine o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. So tell a friend to tell a friend. We will have Emmanuel Taylor, who's gonna be taking on Lucas La Machina Matisse, who's taking his comeback on the Canelo Chavez Jr. Mega pay per view. Let's get to class and bound in Texas. Get off speaker, my friend. Chavez, uh, I'm not on speaker. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, it's it's here. Uh, uh, fight prediction time. Uh, real quickly about Lucas Matisse. So that eye injury, I think a lot of people have forgotten that, that war he had with Ruslan Provodnikov. And, and on that same show, a caller had, uh, had said something really, really profound where he was talking about, like, both Provodnikov and Matisse would never be the, the same after that fight. And you're seeing it down. Like Lucas Matisse is breaking down. Like, I, I don't, I don't know how he's going to look for this uh, Emmanuel Taylor fight. I'm going to pick him just because I'm going to give him the chance. Cause like, he's the name, you know, like I, I'm going to go with him, but I'm not too sure about it. Um, David Lemieux is going to win. Canelo Chavez. Canelo's going to shine in this fight. Like, I'm just going to say it flat out. Like you, you, so, some people are saying size, 
power. He's he's going to take these shots. Chavez is going to look horrendous in this fight. And I'm going to tell you right now, you if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, you can give me all you can give me two servings of curl. But Chavez is not going to look good. He's never had he's never had great boxing skill. He's never set up his his work. And anybody with any kind of uh, a kind of an educated jab always gives him problems. So all in all, if you're putting your money on Chavez, you better save it for Triple G because Chavez is not Triple G. Wait, he's going to get worked in that ring, and right. Canelo won't knock him out. He'll, he, the, the worst thing that'll happen to Chavez is that they stop the fight. Canelo will not knock him out. He, he has a chin, and Juan is a 175 pounder, so he won't knock him out cold. But he's going to get hurt in this fight. You know, Chavez wants to speak to you. He's on. Hey, hey, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Huh? You yep, that was Chavez. He's coming, baby. He's not playing that. Game. <laughs> 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 Ah, uh, finally, Casual got a good soundbite yeah. off. That was the best time. That was the best soundbite he's ever played. That one was solid. That was solid, but yo. What's up? Yo, y'all still doing intros or no? Hell yeah. yeah. It's $45. They went up. When, when, when I get intro? How, how much we're how much in intro? Well, uh, Dollar DiBiase is the one that does it. He charges, I think, $35. Dollar DiBiase on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Dollar DiBiase. He's the one that does them, you know, because we we, we we do require some uh, quality. But there are some users that have submitted their own. So, you know. But Class and Bound, thanks for calling right. in. Um, definitely uh, submit one if you have it. If not, holler at Dollar. You know, give Dollar a dollar. He's been a, a, a big supporter of the show. He does all our introductions for our own show, and he's done introductions for the some of the hosts. And, Plenty of the callers, yeah, guys. Like done some introductions for the show. Um, I don't mean to cut you off, but you know, I did one for Monster. That was a hundred dollar value. I did one for um, uh, Joey. Uh, what? No, Casual has like the biggest ego, and it gets hurt all the time. Like Georgie, hey, Georgie, hey, you got hey, it, hey, 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 Jay from Orlando, you ain't gonna say what's up to Casual. I'm here too. <laughs> You're so funny, bro. No, but I'm just Yo, Casual did mad intros. He did a. He did a. Let me see. I'm gonna play some right now. He did his own intro. <laughs> Play that. Nah, we already played that. You that's all you got. You just did yours and monsters, man. That's it. I did Georgie Porgies. Oh, yeah, you did Georgie Porgies. I did uh the former guest that used to be on the show. I don't want to say his name, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say his name, but I definitely want to get credit for that intro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, I don't want to say his name, but I did his intro. Yo, hilarious, hilarious. Cash Madge is hard. Everyone talking about intros. I, I'm the one who's still rocking the old, like, soundbite intro. You don't hear me complaining or, or asking for yo, shit. Yo, yours is the best, though. Cause I don't even have best. an intro, Steve. Don't worry. Like yeah, I don't got an intro. Everybody complains about it. I, I, and here he is, the Dominican Nightmare. You have Michael Buffer giving your intro. That's, like, the best. What are you talking about? And plus, the show intro is your intro, Ness. Let's be Whatever. real. Whatever. You Only got a fucker with two intros and shit. Like a half an hour and shit. Let Mine's me. the best, hands down. I got Prince Nassim Hamed, the GOAT, and Nate Diaz. Come on, man. man Yours crap. has like MMA, you know, so that means people tune out for half of it. You know, speaking you know, of intros, we got some uh, alumni callers who actually have intros and have earned them for being good callers. Going out to Chicago. Yo, what's up? What's up, man? Um, let's start off with the undercard. It's a decent little undercard uh, Golden Boy put together. Um, I'm going with um, Matisse. Um, I think I like Emmanuel Taylor, but I just think Matisse. Um, well, I don't know what Matisse we're going to get because he's been off for a while, but I'm, I'm just going with Matisse because I feel like, you know, the power will be, will be the difference of that fight. Um, I'm going with um, David Lemieux by knockout. As always, and uh, I'm going with uh, Canelo. I think Canelo he's gonna beat the brakes off of Chavez, man. I, I don't think it's gonna be no competition. I can see a late round stoppage. I, I think we're gonna see like you know a lot of combination punches, body work, uppercuts, and you're gonna see a whole bunch of um, Chavez. All he's doing is gonna shrug his shoulders every time he get landed. 
So, so Santana, if, if it's if it's that easy for you, like, uh, if it's that easy for you to see, don't you think Golden Boy put this together for a reason to to blind the people? Hmm? Shouldn't it have been Triple G? I hope they put you on the. Uh, no, I hope they put when you on the undercard to build up a fight with him with Canelo. I would like to see that fight next. So hopefully, if we don't get the Triple G fight, I would like to see the David Lemieux fight. You know, I feel like that's a dangerous fight for Canelo. But uh, for me, uh, Chavez has always been like an average fight. I, I felt like he was a, a weight bullier at um, 160. I felt like he was always digging in his opponent by 15, 20 pounds. So he always overwhelmed him. But if you put him in there with a guy that got boxing skills like Martinez who exposed him, I mean, I mean, he, you, you know, the outcome is going to be he's going to get exposed. He's going to look like a, a below average fighter. So. I feel like, you know, this this is telling me for uh, Canelo. It's going to look something similar to Angulo fight, you know. And uh, like I said, I see a late-round stoppage. The only way I see Chavez winning if if Canelo gets fatigued from um, landing punches on uh, on uh, Chavez, and then he can come in the 12th round like Martinez did. That's the only way. But that's all I got. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, thanks for calling in. Santana in Chicago. We're going to go out to our Skype machine. Looks like we got a first-time caller. How long have you been listening, my friend? Hello, hello. Yes, sir. How long have you been listening? Oh, probably for like about six months, man. Sweet. So uh, you know the tradition. We're going to get him play this first-time caller <laughs> intro. You just let us know your name and where you're calling from. Ladies and gentlemen, making his professional debut. This is Seth. Living in Scotland by way of Washington Heights. <laughs> oh, sweet. Right in New York City. What's going on, brother? In the Heights, man. You out there. You having fun. Now, oh, you came from Scotland. Now you having a lot of fun, huh? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yo, man, I just like um just big up to you, man, and all your people, man. Your whole show is there's there's really not a whole lot of show. Well, there isn't a show really like it. So I just appreciate like you got the way you guys mix it up. So um yeah, man. Um, I just, uh, I don't know, man. I like think that there, there is a chance in fucking hell. Maybe Chavez Jr. Does something. I don't know if he could actually really, really do it, but I think there's a chance. I'm just, I don't know, man. I just, I mean, your man is crazy, but still, man, maybe he could, maybe he could, maybe he could fucking catch Canelo, man. Maybe. You know, people keep uh, saying that, uh, you know, Canelo's going to totally you just... change your name to Al the Optimist instead of Al Doomsday. <laughs> Al yeah. the Optimist. You know what it is, you guys? Everybody, nobody's considering, nobody's considering uh, uh, Nacho Bernstein in this camp and, and, and what he could have probably uh, came up with as a game plan towards Canelo, you know? We keep, Nacho we keep Bernstein it. there for eight weeks is, uh, is going to help him how much? It's that you, for, to and begin with... Old dog new tricks in boxing. Listen, you could always learn new tricks in this. It's just a discipline. it's the discipline that he put into this camp. And for people to start saying that he's totally going to get demolished and outboxed, you know what I'm saying? Without oh, Have you seen Canelo fight, bro? Of course. He is the better Let's go back to Seth. Boxer. Let's go back to Seth. We'll talk about this yeah, after. Yeah, Let's yeah, Seth yeah, get his phone clock. Phone he's on the clock. He's got yeah, an Sorry, Seth. You sparked the... You sparked the uh... I know. I had, I had to drop that shit in the conversation just for a second just to see. Look. I mean, Canelo is no fucking joke. I mean, we know this, but like, I just, I don't know. How crazy would that be if he fucked him up though? <laughs> like, that's, that's the thing. That's what we all secretly want because, you know, we want to like see someone get derailed, but it's not going to happen. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, Canelo is, is got, is feeling the vibe and he, he, he'll, he's going to keep winning. I mean, he, that's what he's, he's all about. And, and I'm like, I respect him for that. Um, but it was just like, what? I just kept thinking the other day. I was like, just what if that motherfucker lost? Like, <laughs> but you know, I don't know. It's it's cool, man. It'll be crazy. It'll be crazy. He'll probably get. It'll probably your man will get. Will stop him. I mean, uh, Canelo will probably stop his ass. So, Seth, <laughs> how long you been in in the Heights, bro? Because you have no Scotland accent. I mean, you sound like one of the no, guys. no, no. I'm a yo. I'm a no, 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 no. I I am. I'm from Washington Heights, but I live in Scotland, man. Oh, yeah, man. 
So what? What are you? you, you you're, you're Latin though. You're Dominican. No, 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 I'm like Ukrainian and Polish, man. Yo, what were you doing in the Heights over there, chilling on Dykeman at the marina and shit? You were supposed to be in Greenpoint. It was one one seventy third, right at Greenpoint, right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> in Amsterdam, man. You know, fuck it. <laughs> I love it, man. So you're all the way in Scotland now. Is, is it always raining over there? Or is that a myth? It really is. It's it's kind of fucked up, yeah. Damn. But uh, you know, we, the heights to the highlands. So what is it? The the job pulled you over there? Is buckets of loads, bo uh, boat loads of money, or what? What the no, hell no, made no, you go no, from no. the heights I, uh, to Scotland? Well, that uh, I got. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know what it is, guys. It's always a lady. Well, it it initially kind of was. It got me overseas, and then that shit got fucked up, and then, you know, and then actually, actually I did a PhD out here. So, yeah. Wow. PhD in what, brother? There's a PhD in, like, in uh, basically sound design, like with digital audio. Sweet. So, you might need to have a conversation with Casual one day. Well, listen, Seth, I want to thank you, obviously, for calling in, being a first-time caller all the way from Scotland, making our show more international. You listening, Kelly Swanson and Phil Pokes out there? There you are. We're going to go from Seth in Scotland all the way to California, home of the, the good bud. Mr. Info Joe. Tell the truth, yo. Tell the truth. This portion of the show we call... In the it's nose, presented by my I'll brother. Tell the truth, tell the truth. Yo, 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 you know it ain't no show without info. Joe, TBV, the voice of the people. There is no equal pound for pound number one. What up? I look forward to this show like my wife looks forward to Empire every week. What up, Ness Casual, Doomsday Steven, Matt? Shout out to Munster. Putting in that work too. What up, Joe? Hey, Joe, man, what's going on, brother? Can't wait for us to get back together, man. Matt is so lucky to be over there with the with the West Coast TBV crew, man. I can't get casual to watch a fight. I've been trying to get casual over here since Joshua Klitschko. We gonna be there Cinco de Mayo. He lying, ringing bells. <laughs> Shout to hey, man, I, I can't wait for us all to get back together for the appreciation party, man. I miss all y'all, all the callers that showed up, man. Number love, brother. Hey, uh. Put me down for Gamboa uh, versus Robin Hood. Uh, I think Robin Hood, man, Castellanos, man, I don't think I pronounced his name right. He's going to give Gamboa a good fight. If Gamboa and then run that extra mile like he should, he'd give Gamboa a run for his money. But I'm going with Gamboa, David Lemieux. Put me down for Matisse. If he still has anything left, he's, it's his power. Because I say that's the last thing that leaves you is the power. And uh, put me down for Jojo Diaz. And Ness, give me a drum roll. Shit, drum roll, drum roll. Brr, he's going for brr. Oh, Oh, ho, ho. Come on, man. We don't need no fake sound bites. And Re DJ Enrique, I got no bites. Brr. I got just, it's just going to take some time, though. Here we go. Oh, OK. Go ahead. Man. Uh, put me down for Canelo. Hey, <laughs> 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 Hey, uh, Info Joe, let me throw you a curveball. That was Matt. Just want you to know that was Matt. Just want you to know. Curveball, totally off topic. When I say this word, what's the first thing comes to mind? Shannon Briggs. Let's go, champ. Yo, what the fuck, Let's Enrique? Let's go, champ. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Quindo. Uh, fight with Quindo. It's the first thing comes to my mind. Are you going to watch that I don't fight? I'm pronouncing his name right. Yeah, I watched that fight just to see where Shannon Briggs is at, man. I would love to see that fight. I think he's going to bring it. Who the fuck is that, that guy? Day. Yeah. So I've how seen the other guy uh, fight before too? All right, all right. Go ahead, brother. No, 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 no. That, that was that was uh that was it. That was it. How important okay. is Shannon One Briggs? More thing, in, man. How how important is Shannon Briggs in that uh in that heavyweight you know division? Uh, I think they can put him in there, man, for tune-up fights and for, uh... No, no, no. Important. Important. Like to... How important? His overall personality, skill as a fighter. Not important right. at all. Not important at all. 
All right. If you want a few more seconds no. since I jacked you, it's all good. He's a good idea, though. Good Instagram. Oh, man, I just wanted to say, man, prayers in the air for Pritchard Cologne and his family. Uh, may God bless him, and uh, hopefully he recovers soon, man. He's uh, put his life on the line uh, doing the sport that we love, trying to entertain us, man. And shout out to all the boxers and all the fighters, man. Hope they all stay safe in that ring. Peace, my brothers. One love. Info. You already know. Um, Cash, so so what you saying? Like, you, you mess with Let's Go Champ like that? I mean, I follow him on Instagram. He seems like a live spirit. You know, I, I know yeah. him fight. I've seen him fight, actually, a long, long time ago when he fought the Klitschko brother. But, like, how important is he in the heavyweight division to you? Um, there's, there's, I mean, where is he ranked? If he was ranked somewhere. I mean, to you? To me? Not at all. He's an entertainer to me. All right, so he's not important. He's irrelevant to you. As a fighter, as a contender, nah. What about he's you? He's high in the WBA, isn't he? Because isn't that that regular title that he's fighting yeah, for? He's fighting for, like a, he's fighting for a version of that WBA. Yeah, Jeff Oak, Horn's fighting Oak, Oak, Pacquiao. But one thing that you Jeff Horn great? No. One thing you hey, got we didn't say great. We said ranked. Yo, this hipster right. always is mad. But but we said ignore the rankings. We said where did they, where did they? One of the most they, angry stoners I've ever uh, met in my life, man. <laughs> he must be a SoCal smoker. Shannon Briggs is. He must just be sitting you know? there chilling, pissed off about everything. <laughs> 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 Bro. Got, you, one thing you got to credit Shannon Briggs for is that he's his own machine. He put himself he's out. He's a self-promoter. Yep. One of the best self-promoters so Here goes the question. Drum roll, please. You ready to take a, a flight to, 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 to see Shannon Briggs? Let's go, chat. I would do it just to be a part of that crowd. Just part of that. We got a press that, conference on Tuesday. Yeah, that, I almost got gun. Oh, I yeah. Hollywood, Hollywood, Florida. What you saying? What you saying? What you saying, Cash? Drum roll. Can I get a uh, drum roll? Hold on, hold on. Before you get a drum, <laughs> drum roll, show. Yo, before you get a drum roll. <laughs> the drum roll show by way of Info Joe. Because you, you ain't say nothing. You supposed to say something there. You can tell he's not hyped. You can tell him he's like, oh, I got to waste my time for that shit. I, I think he got his own camera crew. Oh, <laughs> it's disrespectful, bro. Nah, but I like Shannon Briggs a lot. I feel like I know him. That's how much I see him on Instagram. But you're not he's gonna a hop legendary on a Instagram. To go see him. Um, he, nah, but if it went to air, I would watch it to see what he's got, and then you know go from that. You remember when he ate Klitschko's food? Yes, and, like, threw it in his <laughs> face. When he, was when he was on the boat and he got on the paddleboard, yeah. and Shannon Briggs yeah. is yelling at him. That's and the best. That's where he became famous. That was good. All right, crickets. So, I guess he's only existing to Al. Al, how important is well, Shannon? Al's Mr. Positive. Cheers! Mr. On, optimistic. Man. Al Optimist. I think, I think, look, man, you guys are talking optimistic about ranking. Al. Optimistic and Prime. That's yeah, it. Optimistic. It's really Doomsday. It's listen. Optimistic Prime. Hey, listen, listen, listen. You guys are talking about, you know, the question is, is, is he relevant to the heavyweight division or, or, or is he important to the heavyweight division? Obviously, you know, he's not right now uh, looked as, you know, a, a prospect to win tight and all the titles back and all that stuff. But he's doing something special down there, isn't he? Uh, if he wins it, it's like the third version in like 20 years that he the title that he wins or something like that. Yeah, he's breaking a, a record that uh, some type he's of record. devised because uh, according to him, uh, no even yeah. this fight important should tbv stamp stamp its claim and put the tbv flag in hollywood california hey, hey listen uh, look what he's uh, doing for boxing he's, he's promoting he's boxing florida. it's hollywood florida if you believe that he's going to be the first person to win a title for a third time over the age of 44 which is like ridiculously specific then yeah it's important but yo, it, I, yo, yo he could be he could be anthony joshua's next opponent then matt was gonna is gonna pull all his hair out yeah, <laughs> it's not even drawn that. Okay, I, I, yo, you I heard him and bring as a character. I think he's an awesome self promoter. Hold on, hold on. He'll go from Tom Cruise to Bruce I Willis swear, like that. I swear to fucking God, if Anthony Joshua fights Shannon Briggs next, I'm off that train. I'm yo, off. Anthony I'm off the you heard train. him. Fast. You heard him. He was like, that. he was like Shannon Briggs. Shannon Briggs. Let's go, champ. Yo, so is yo. You never know. He that might be that. Canadian accent, man. Calm <laughs> 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 Shannon Briggs, yeah, I, yeah, he's a good guy. Let's go, champ. 
I am a real American. I don't know how to pronounce those names, yo. <laughs> now, nah, let's get to some callers. We got, oh, everyone's favorite trainer. 323 Santiago. Santiago. Hey, guys, what's up? Another Prediction Thursday and uh, another weekend of fights to look forward to tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, first things foremost, uh, best wishes to Pritchard Cologne and his family. Hopefully everything works out well for him, whatever they try to do in, uh, from here on into the future. And um, put me down for Gamboa uh, tomorrow. But I would not be surprised if Robinson Castellanos ends up living up to his moniker Robin Hood and sealing himself a win this, uh, this go around. And as for Saturday's fights, uh, I have Canelo down, Jojo Diaz, Lucas Matisse, and Marlon Esparza. And also, kudos to Marlon Esparza getting her request accepted to fight her second professional fight with three minutes instead of the traditional two minutes that women have been having to fight. You know, shout out to her and all that. As for the condition of Lucas Matisse, uh, honestly, it, it is a toss-up fight to me because we don't know what Matisse is going to Are we going to get the Matisse that's still dangerous, can still give us a good fight, has that power, and can make it work? Or is he going to end up looking like John Molina did against Humberto Soto and uh, Adrian... Um, Broner, where he looked horrendously gun shy, and then um, as for the uh, main event itself, Canelo and Chavez, um, I definitely see Canelo picking his shots, counter punching the fuck out of uh, Chavez on his on his A game and everything. But I can definitely see that if he works the body, he can wear him down and get himself a late round stoppage because. He is going to be a big man in that fight. He's not going to be a Liam Smith or, or James Kirkland, who's like 154 pounds at max, like 160, 170 pounds. So it should be an interesting fight, and I wouldn't be surprised if he scores the upset. As always, any questions you guys have regarding any of these topics, feel free to ask. Otherwise, that's my call. Yo, what if Chavez Jr. only rehydrates like another, like, let's say he gets, he rehydrates, but he's still like 170. Maybe maybe lower, like 169. Does that change your, your yeah, opinion on him being a big... 181, 182. You think so? He's going to rehydrate that much overnight? That's 14? what Freddie said. He said, he's, yeah. he said he wants to bring him in at 181, 182, uh, and the highest would be 185. That'd be interesting because I'm sure he's been training at a much lower weight than that. So for him to be operating at that higher weight... Might be kind of I don't know if that's counterintuitive, but maybe they plan on using their the fight style that they have will be based on him being the heavier guy and landing a lot of heavy shots. I don't know. I would assume that they'd probably want him at a at a lighter weight to be more prime to throw more punches. I feel like a heavier Chavez throws less punches. Santiago, what's your nationality, buddy? I'm uh, American born, but my mom is from El Salvador and my dad's from Guatemala. Oh, so you got no no dog in this fight. You're not pulled either way. Just all skill and talent for you. That's usually how it always works for me, brother. And also, Steven, don't forget that uh, when he fought Martinez, it was rumored that he was weighing as high as 190 for that fight. And the day before, he weighed 157 pounds. Yeah, well, what we do know on record, thanks, uh, Santiago, what we do know is that do he we weighed up. For like 182, I think it was for the Andy Lee fight. That was the highest one, right? Where he where he came in on record, second day way. I mean, next, yeah, fight night way in uh, 182. We're gonna go to Terrell in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear, brother. Yeah, what's up, y'all, man? Um, I just want to make my picks. Um, I got Gamboa. Um, I got. Uh, I got I got Emmanuel Taylor. I think Matisse is done. I think he was done after the uh, the Danny Garcia fight. I think that took something out of him. Um, I got uh, David Lemieux. I don't know who he's fighting, but I, I got David Lemieux. I think we should start campaigning for David Lemieux and Danny Jacobs. Uh, I want to see that fight so bad. I, I I don't know why nobody's talking about that. Um, Canelo Chavez. I got Canelo easy. Uh, 
I don't understand people talking about Chavez. If he's motivated, he could be motivated all you want, man. Skills pay the bills. Canelo's vicious with the body shots, man. He's going to break him down. And I think he's going to get him out of there. 10th, 11th round. I don't care how motivated you think he is. I mean, he's an average fighter to me personally. But um, uh, that's it. That, that's all I got. Uh, I think it's going to be a good weekend. Over. I, I, I really want to see David Lemieux, Danny Jacobs. I hope somebody... We start campaigning for that. We we make that happen because I don't know who he's fighting right now. That's it. All right, Terrell. Thanks for calling in. Let's get out to Muhammad in West Africa. What's going on, brother? Yo, what up, what up, man? I just made it out of the dentist of life. It was fucked up, man. Damn, what you get? A root canal? Crown? No, I got crown, man. Shit. I, walking from my car to the office was like a ring walk for me, man. Shit, I feel like... Uh, I know what them boxers feel when they're scared, like Chavez is going to be on Saturday. Did you see the face-off in the press conference? Of course we did. Country? No, I'm talking about the press conference when they're looking at, at you. you know, he's intimidated. You know, Canelo is me looking at him like he want to kill him. So I got Canelo, uh, the, the Orgullo de Guadalajara. I got uh, Matisse. I got David Lemieux. I got Gamboa. And I think it's going to be, if, if this card is successful, it's going to be great because we're going to have like two back-to-back, -back, you know, spectacular events with Joshua Klitschko. And then you have Canelo going to bring in, I think the paper is going to do about a million, at least a million, maybe 1.5. So this is Cinco de Mayo. But when it comes to Cinco de Mayo, that's Cinco de Canelo. Chavez is just a tourist. He's just there for the, I think he's going to quit. That's what I. That's what I believe. And I heard you uh, asking casual why he's not going to any more fights because I'm not there. He doesn't have my ticket. That's why he doesn't go to <laughs> fights. <laughs> All right, man. That's Yo, call, man. Muhammad. Yo, yeah, yeah. Shannon Briggs. How important is he? Nah, Shannon Briggs is just looking for a last decent paycheck. He's not relevant as far as I'm concerned. I like the guy. He's, but but he, he he's not relevant. You know. Come on, man. He's just looking for a paycheck. He, he can come see me. I'll, I'll give him some money. <laughs> Damn. All right, Muhammad. Well, thanks for calling in, brother. All right, We're going to go out to Cassius, not Clay. What's going on, brother? You in the UK? Let's go, chum. <laughs> you out in Florida, yeah, then? You in Florida. No, no, oh, wait. Yeah, United Kingdom, bro. Hey, UK loves, loves the cannon, don't they? Bro, Shannon the Cannon Briggs is going to make history. Y'all haters can keep on hearing <laughs> this man. He's going to be a champion and he's going to come back to y'all when he gets his championship. This man is inspiration. <gasps> this man is inspiration, bro. Let's go, champ. We love the champ in the UK. We love him. Vamos, campeón. So, you wouldn't bro. mind Anthony Joshua, let's go, champ? Bro, I would mind that because... No, is... no, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that, Cassius. Be smarter than that. Be better than that. You're a better fan than that. You call into this show. That means you are somewhat of a hardcore. Do not accept that fight. Come on. Don't listen to that, Cash. Don't listen to that, Cash. Come on, man. What's the, point? What's the point of being a boxing fan if you can't him be fighting with Pulev your heart? is light years better than him fighting Briggs. Light years better. Fighting Briggs will win a title against a nobody, but I don't want him fighting top tens. Take your paycheck and leave. I don't want this guy taking more brain damage. You saw what the Klitschko did to him. I don't want this fight. The other one. Just give this guy nobodies. Let this guy make his last payments um, and be secure for the rest of his life. This WBA regular title, we know it doesn't matter. This guy's finding nobody for it. It's cool. We love Shannon the Khan and Briggs for the positive vibes and just who he is and what he's been doing recently. That's what it is. No, no Anthony Joshua, please. Yeah, but just if he know. wins this title, he's in line for Joshua. He's going he's gonna to retire, bro. Nah, that fight's not happening. That fight's... No, there's no point in that fight. If Anthony Joshua accepts that fight, I want him to wear care all of his belt and retire. That fight should not happen whatsoever. Look at this guy. Shannon the Cannon Briggs, at, the, at his age, is going to fight Anthony Joshua. Yo, you think it's going to be some, some, like, some craziness happen at the press conference on Tuesday? You think Shannon, like, smacks a quendo? I think, I think he's going to do something crazy. I've got a feeling he's going to do crazy stuff to get his stock up. He's going to pull a Conor McGregor. Damn, a Connor. Matt, you got to go would, now. He's pulling a I fucking not, Connor. I'm not even going to address this at all. Fuck Connor McGregor. Anyways, I think this guy's going to call a Klitschko. 
I think he's going to go after Klitschko again because, let's be honest, we all kind of want to see that Klitschko fight. Vladimir Klitschko and him after that Palo Boy incident, some other incidents, we kind of want to see that fight. No. I, I, no, I think... I think <laughs> no. Matt, no one wants to see that. Matt, you so <laughs> will kill him. Klitschko will fucking murder him, dude. Yo, Matt, you're such a meanie, bro. Let this man... Yo, this is the whole point of boxing, man, for us to bro, fantasize on... on money. Let, this guy's been advertising it. When we have situations like what happened with Pritchard Cologne, a young man, not even in his prime yet, and you want a 44-year-old man to go out there who's been in the game for 20-plus years, years you, want him to, you want him to get brain damage? I don't. No, we don't want him to get brain damage, but at the end of the day, you sign you that contract. He wanted to step up to that plate. You know what I'm saying? Get that WBA. Joshua might have to flatten him. Listen, Cassius, you only get the fight for one round, baby. You only get the fight for one round. Let's go out to Hurricane Ray in Miami. Let's go, champ. Yo, you right there. I know you're going to ho Hollywood, Florida, Seminole Casino. Let's go, champ. Shannon Cannon. No? Damn, why you always on speaker yeah, you know, now, he, Ray? I'm not on speaker. I'm at the gym. Jesus, sound like it's raining in exactly. your gym. It sounds like you're in the yeah, eye yeah. of the hurricane, like right? A, a quiet place, man. Sound like he was place. running inside hey. the treadmill. Yo. Call him Mr. Breathe Heavy Yo. right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought Canelo was going to be breathing heavy on, uh, on Saturday night. Check this out, check this out though. Um, Yo, Ness, man, you, we can't, in regards to Lucas Mathesis, man, we prop up Donnie Garcia, we prop up Keith Thurman on the fact that, you know, they, 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 they got this fight here with, with, with Lucas Mathesis, then you're going you're gonna to shit on him. It can't be both ways, man. You know, before, um, before you know, Keith Thurman, uh, Danny Garcia got the Keith Thurman fight, we, we said that Lucas Mathesis was, the, was the, his big fight, you know, so... We can't shit on, on Lucas Mathesis like that. Anyways, here's my pick real quick. I'm going Mathesis. I'm going Gamboa. I'm going um, Lemieux. And I'm, I'm going to go Chavez, even though I know Canelo got, got, got more skills than him, man. On the other note, um, man, Leon Smith was able to, to move uh, Canelo around. You know, he was a stationary target. He was able to push him up against the ropes. Uh, at times, you know, he, 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 he landed some good shots. I don't know how effective they were, but he landed nonetheless. Now, he's going against uh, Chavez, a bigger opponent. Uh, he's moving up in weight. He hasn't been at this weight. I don't know how acclimated he's going to feel in the ring at this weight. So we got, we got to take that into account. We got to make sure that, that he's even able to go the 12 rounds. And uh, you got to remember, last time uh, Nacho and, uh, and a memoir radio teamed up, man, there was a knockout. So that's my call. I'm going to get back to working. TVV, let's do it. All right, Ray. See, listening to the show while at the gym. If you're doing the same, present, future, past, make sure you drop us a five-star review on iTunes. Helps with the visibility of the show. And if you're watching this simultaneously here live on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we do numerous spontaneous shows throughout the week. And hit that thumbs up button. Let's jump out to... JD in Texas. Damn, JD was like four hours away from us. We can't even meet up. JD, Oh, shit. Nobody unmuted JD? Dropping the balls over there, both those producers. Yo, yo. What up? Yo, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Um, nah, man. Yeah, I was four hours away, man, but that's one hell of a drive, uh, especially when you're working. Um, Nah, man, definitely. I, before before I start this call, I want to give a shout out to Jamel Charlo, and hopefully now we can stop we can stop talking about Jamal being the most powerful, 
and, and the most skilled when I've, I've been looking at these dudes is equal. I, I just had to get that out of the way. Um, now getting to this week's fight, right? Of course, my dude is fighting Gamboa. I'm going with him. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and rock with uh Matisse. Day. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna rock with him. And um, uh, who else we got? JoJo. I'm a fan of JoJo Diaz. Um, I want to see that dude develop. I want to see him get all the way to the top. You know what I'm saying? Um, who else we got? Uh, I'm missing one before the main event. Oh, Lemieux. Okay, Lemieux, Lemieux. Um, yeah, of course, I'm gonna go with Lemieux. Um, I haven't even seen the other guy fight, so I gotta go with Lemieux. So, uh, getting to the main event, though, I love everything Chavez did in the face-off. He called him out. He called him Golden Boy out on all the bullshit. Like, all the bullshit. Ness, you were being super biased on that. I was listening to that, uh, the the review of the show. You was being super biased uh, towards Canelo. <gasps> he couldn't, he couldn't do, yeah, he couldn't do no wrong, man. <laughs> you know like, what, what it is? No, nah, let me tell you. Him, no, this, the, the language barrier, it separates it for you. So you're reading uh, subtitles. I'm watching his facial expressions and I'm listening to his words. He was more cutthroat in there, bro. Chavez knows he didn't get you know, no better. You know, but but check this out though. You know what I what I noticed? I, I felt like Chavez got under his skin just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Just calling calling out all that bullshit. Yes, he did have comeback for it, but you could tell, like, I heard y'all say, like, look at his, you know. <laughs> I heard y'all saying look at his mannerisms and shit like that like towards the end and yeah he was like he was I, looking I like, like a little shy a little duck Chavez was looking all shy his back was all curled his posture he was looking like Chavez got punked Chavez got punked in that face off he looked that, like Austin you, Kusher that, yo that yo that's how y'all took it but I took it like he was just like yeah whatever you know what I'm saying like <laughs> whatever he was yeah, like, yeah. a classic stoner not caring about things Oh, yeah. man, it's over for you, JD. But I was about to what say, up? what are you talking about when um, fucking he made some whack ass points anyway? Talking about Canelo's resume, like Canelo's resume doesn't do fucking fifteen thousand backflips on top of his. Like, yo, he's bugging, bringing up resume and fights and oh, yo, he really had the nerve. Like, Cotto, you think Cotto's good after he beat Martinez? Like, man, get out of here, bro. Like, he better not quit this fight is all he need to do. He need to worry about that. That's what he need to worry about. JD talking about his mannerism. Yeah, all right, JD. Let's bring him back on. Are you picking JD him? JD loves he... underdogs. You know no, that. JD he loves the underdog. Hey, hey, super producer, did he pick? No. All right, bring this guy back the fuck on. He trying to get out of here. Where you? Yo, what's your pick? Where you going? Yo, yo, my pick is this. Chavez, I'm all the way in his corner, right? I love it. <laughs> 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 but at the same time, Canelo going to stop him in nine. Exactly. Goodbye. Put him down for nine. We're going to the uh, lovely producer. Ah! I'm a motherfucking monster. Hey, Lemieux. What's up, Lemieux? What's um, it's not even my time, and I got a lot to say. But um, I'm hoping everybody's tuning in. In about a couple of minutes, we should be having Amanda Taylor on the show. Very excited to hear what he has to say. Um, I'm picking him. You know, talking about Amanda Taylor, I'm picking him for the show. But I'll break down a little bit more why I'm picking him and not Latisse. But Steve Calderon, I just want to let you know that I'm on board with you, brother, on that reason. <laughs> I swear. I think it's uh, exactly how I feel. I think Matisse is done as well. Um, but, yeah, definitely we'll come back on the show later on, give my predictions and my opinions, and I will talk to you guys later. All right. Pedazo de Monster going out to Connecticut. CT, talk to us. Hey, what's going on here? What's up? How you guys doing? All right, all right. Um. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Gamboa tomorrow. Um, I'm going with uh, Taylor as well. 
Uh, I think he has a little bit more in the tank left than Matisse. And uh, I'm going with a new. Um, what was the other, the other fight, Diaz? Joseph Diaz? Junior? Joseph Diaz, yeah, I'm going with him. And, yeah. And um, for the main event, I'm going with uh, Canelo. But I think it's going to be interesting early, only because Canelo's not really a fleet footed fighter. And uh, he fights in spurts, so I think Chavez will have to pressure him early and try to get that, that extra weight on him because uh, Canelo hasn't fought a, a heavier fighter than, than Chavez ever. So we'll see how uh, Canelo adjusts to that weight, somebody leaning on him, pushing him against the ropes. But all in all, I think um, <clears throat> the weight cut that Chavez went down, I think it's going to catch up to him later in the fight. And I think he's going to get cut from, like, you know, um, <clears throat> around the eyes or some type of swelling. And I think they're, they're going to uh, call on the fight. I think Canelo stopped him late. So I think, like, you know, all in all, for him losing that much weight, I think his his body will take a toll on it. From him losing that much weight, he'll get cut over his eyes, some type of laceration. All right, CT, man. Thanks for calling in, brother. Um, let's jump out to our favorite Canadian. Popping all this champagne, popping all this rose, getting money like Jose, chain cold, Norway, shorty wants that full play. I'm like, no way, gotta rock like Coldplay, killing it. Oh, Eating cheese like Green Bay, call me Aaron Rodgers. Hopped out there, dodging them cops. Yo, boys, what's going on? What up, what up? Yo, I just wanted to, to answer that one guy, that one guy that called in about the intro. Let me tell you, man. Nothing better than having your own intro on the on the best boxing podcast in the world, man. No doubt. It's the best. It's a privilege. Thank you guys for that. Anyway, this fight, guys, is, is very special for me, man. Because for me, Chavez is the man. Five years ago, I went to watch him and Martinez fight. Round 12 was so amazing. I couldn't even explain to you guys what that was like. So, so amazing. It was so amazing, in fact, that after the fight, I was in Vegas, went straight to the chapel, and I got married, man. That's how crazy it was, man. So that's how much love I have for Chavez, man. I, I really do hope he wins. You know, I hope, uh, you know, it's almost impossible, man. You know, this is one of those fights that, that makes me truly love boxing, man. You know, I'm going to be nervous the whole fight, and, and I'm hoping that he wins, man. I'm, I'm really hoping that it all comes around full circle, and he's able to, to get the W, man. It's, um, it's going to be tough, you know. I, I, I believe... That, that the odds are set for a reason. And what, what's Canelo at? A three to one, four to one favorite right now? Do you guys know? Almost a five, bro. You put a hundred on fucking uh, Chavez Juni, you get 480. Man, but you know what? Rightfully so, man. Canelo looks ready. He looks prepared. But the thing about Canelo is that um, he's got nothing to win in this fight, man. You guys can say what you want, but. Canelo has changed already, man. Like, the way people used to love him, it, it, it's over. It's done. He ran. He ducked. Yeah, but Jose, league. it's okay. And it's okay to fights... be hated. Remember, Mayweather was hated, so now they want to see him lose. So when he yeah, finally but, gives him that it's, Triple it's G fight. for a different way, though. Yo, when he finally no, gives him that Triple G fight and beats Triple G, people are going to go crazy yeah. for Canelo. It's too mm -hmm. late. It's too late. He had to fight him last year when Trip now Triple G's been exposed. If Triple he would have fought old, him, Triple G looks tired. Nah, man, get out of here. If he would have fought him last year, if he would have fought him last year and lost, you would have seen people would have loved him more or just as much as they love him now. When he lost to Mayweather, people loved him. It was frustrating because everybody wanted him to win. He lost. He took the challenge. He took the challenge like a true champion. But he ducked Triple G, man, and that's never going to change. I'm telling you. There's nothing he can do to regain that true love from people, man. He didn't duck Triple G. People, you, didn't listen, Travis, you didn't hear our show yesterday. Did, he clearly said that the WBC only gave him 15 days. Yeah, you know what, though, man? 15 days is, is 14 days too many. He should have said, fuck it. Let's go. I'm the champ. I'll take you on. And I'm telling you, man, his popularity just, just hit a brick road as soon as, uh, or brick wall as soon as he said no to that. And... You know, it, I'm telling you, he's going to win nothing in this. Chavez, on the other hand, he's got the whole world to fight for, man. And, and I'm hoping that, that he's going to dig in and, and that'll inspire him. Maybe you guys ask a guy like Taylor, man, see if that makes a difference, you know? You hear everybody always say it before every fight. They're going to dedicate it to their mom, their sister, their dad. At the end of the day, is he going to have 
you know, the mental strength to do it for himself. That's what it comes down to. I'm hoping he does. And uh, you know what? It's exciting. And this is what makes boxing worth it, man. So put me down as Chavez Jr. You know what? And, and just to show my support, I'll even bet somebody a nice TBV hoodie. One to one. Chavez. Uh, so whoever wants it, I'll take the first taker. My God. You know, anybody's going to jump it, on boys. that. Jose, thanks for calling in. And speaking of first takers, listen, don't be uh, a jack in the box. I'm just keeping it real. Uh, you know, TBV's partnered up with uh, MI Promotions, and we're able to give all our listeners a free box and pendant similar to the Golden Gloves. Check it out on our website. It's all over the website. It's on the banner. Uh, and you get it absolutely free just for being a TBV listener. So next time we have the appreciation night, you know what I mean? You can wear yours. I know JD got some snazzy golden glove ones because he's a fancy amateur and all that. But the rest of us, you know, we could fake the fucking funk. You know what I mean? Just saying. Get it for free, though. You know, at least TBV is able to give you something absolutely free. So put yourself in that position. Head on over to theboxingvoice.com and uh, get it popping, man. Let's get out to the phone lines. We got more alumni. I'm loving it. I told y'all a long time ago, the Kirkland will go down three rounds. Oh, right hand. Down goes Kirkland. Me up. Next, I got milk, baby. Got milk, baby. <laughs> you know, the last time I told y'all Canelo was going to do something, <clears throat> he did just that. Did he not, Ness? Did he not? I mean, your intro says it all. You're damn right it does. So this is how it's going to go down, man. It's going to be a good fight, okay? Canelo is going to win, though, and it's going to be a unanimous decision. He's not going to knock him out, all right? Chavez ain't going to quit. It's going to be a unanimous decision, eight rounds to four, all right? Chavez's style works in Canelo's favor, man. Usually the only type of style that give Canelo problem are the movers and the shakers, the Laura, the Mayweather, right? People who come forward on Canelo, he does pretty damn good, man. He can he he's not that fast on his feet, but he has good upper body movement. I say it all the time. Canelo fights like a Mexican kid who grew up in a black neighborhood. He's kind of got the best of both worlds. He can bang it out, but he has a little bit of flavor in the way he moves around the ring. So. Canelo is going to put some leather on Chavez. Chavez is going to sit there. He's going to sit there and try to grind him down because he has a hell of a chin. But like I said, eight rounds of four uh, for Canelo. And and also, y'all brought up Shannon Breed. What, what were y'all talking about? How important is he in the heavyweight division? Should TBV go to his press conference Tuesday? Yes. Y'all go down there, man. I've been championing for uh, for Shane Breeze to get another crack at a big name for the longest time. Nobody wants to give him a shot. Go down there and, and, and fucking interview the man. He's a, he's a great interview. Every, every time I've seen him on camera, he is fucking entertaining. So y'all go down there and do that for us, all right? He ain't going to let you down, all right? Give the man some shine. Help him, help him, help him get one more big shot, man. I think he, I think he can fuck with anybody in the top ten. All right, yeah, make it an interesting yeah, fight. Yeah, but you're saying, you're saying help him get one more big shot, but like, I mean, like, like Matt said, like, what if he gets a big shot and gets hurt? You know what I mean? Like, he, what if he doesn't yeah, belong yeah. in there? Like, everybody's saying a sympathy fight, but like, does he belong? Is he important? Is he relevant? That's the question. Man, look, anybody can get hurt, man. You know, it just comes down to, um, you know, it, it, it's on him, man. If he wants to keep fighting and they and they clear it, you know, shit. You know, if somebody told you to stop doing the podcast for whatever reason, it's up to you to stop. You know, let that man make money and feed his family. You know, that shit, that shit's out of our hands, man. That's my call. Milk, man, always a pleasure to have you on the show, man. Thank you so much. Uh, but you are the first person to say to go down there. Let's see what the rest of the world says. We're going from Milkman uh, in Atlanta to my man, Josue, in Oregon. Yo, yo, what up, TVV? Hey, I got Canelo by stoppage. 
eighth. I got I got Canelo by stoppage, eighth round. Viva, viva Mexico. All right, brother. Well, right on time, Josue. We're going to go straight to our producer who's ready with our guest, Emmanuel Transformer Teller, taking on Lucas La Machina Matisse. Let's uh, bring him on, guys. You see her there? I got it. Here she is. Monster. Hello, guys. I have Emmanuel Taylor on the line. Emmanuel, how are you doing today, man? I just want to thank you, obviously, for taking the time out to give us the opportunity to interview you before this big fight on a Thursday. I know, uh, you know, time is crunching and uh, tomorrow's weigh-in day, so we don't want to keep you too long, but how is everything? Everything is going great right now. You know, uh, today at the um, press conference, so everything's going to work well. Everything's going at one second. <laughs> So when you got to face off with Lucas, man, how, and you looked into his eyes, I mean, what did you see? Do you see a guy that's ready to come back? Do you feel that this is going to be the best version of him? Or does it not even matter who he is at this moment because you're here for, you know, all your glory? Um, at this point, it doesn't matter who he, what he, what he is looking like, looking like right now. But what I do see is that eye is still messed up because when I look into his eyes, that eye was still kind of like, a little shaky there. So I just think we see the same Matisse that's going to froze up. Hey, now, man, go ahead, oh, Steve. Hey, so I'm Steven, the producer. So I just wanted to ask you about your uh, – in terms of that eye, do you have a game plan based around that eye? And have you considered the fact that his long layoff is probably going to mean he'll – maybe be not as active of a fighter as he used to be? Um, I'm not ab absolutely in that the eye, but, if that, but I'm definitely going to be using my jab all day. So his eye is going to be there to get, get messed up again. So it's all going to play a role in the fight. So, Emmanuel, I traveled to Cincinnati to watch that fight with you and Adrian Broner, and that was an action-packed fight. You were doing great. And uh, as a spectator, whenever I needed to cheer, I wanted you to throw more punches. I wanted you to let your hands go more. Do you feel that you could have let your hands go more, and do you think that that won't be the same in this fight? Um, in the fight, yeah, I could have let my hand go more, you know, um, but in this fight, I'm definitely going to be letting my hand go a lot more because he's in defense mode when you, um, throw a lot of combinations. So I'm definitely going to be letting my hand go a lot this fight. Now, I know that you're moving up and so is he, but, um, you stay active. You're in that DMV area. I know you get a lot of good spawn with a lot of good names. You know, how in shape are you? How prepared are you for this? And, you know, how much of a jump is it for you? I mean, maybe your walk around weight is a lot higher than we think. How how good is Emmanuel Taylor going to look at 147? I fought at 147 a couple of times before, and I came out victorious. I um, mean, against the quality guys, too. So um, I, can, I can make that adjustment to 147 or 140. It doesn't matter. But um, I walk around in like 160, 162 at the most. So um, I'm real comfortable at 47 right now. Hey, uh, Emmanuel. So uh, I've been going through your record, and I, and I noticed that you, despite the fact that you've faced top opposition, you actually, in your losses, you've always put up a really, really good showing. Uh, I would say the hardest punch you probably fought was Adrian Broner. And considering that Matisse is a power puncher, people are kind of, you know, th there's that big question, of what happens if he catches Taylor with a big shot early? How confident are you in your chin going into this fight with the heavy puncher? And is Broner the hardest hitter you ever fought? Um, I'm not really. Um, he's not, he's not that he hard, but it's real heavy. He's got heavy punches to it. And um, also, I've been dropped a couple times in my um, fight. You know, I just came back and won. Um, against Corey Mayfield, he dropped me, came back and won in the decision with him. And against Mr. KO, he dropped me in the fifth round, and I stopped him in the eighth round. So, what, um, what do I get? And I'm saying I want to get knocked down, but 
once I get knocked down, that's a more mental for me to get like push harder. So I kind of like that. I like that fire. Emmanuel, have you changed anything at all for this fight in terms of the camp um, or, or anything like that? Trainers, has everything stood the same? No, everything's the same, you know. Um, I, I didn't change nothing. Everything's still the same. All right. Well, no, you know, I'm 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 simply asking because you've been here before. You've been the B-side to a Golden Boy fighter. So I'm just wondering um, what, if any, changes you feel you need to make. I mean, you know, you, you, you were here with, with Antonio Rusco, which was another close fight. Like my co-host said, you know, all your losses have been very tight or entertaining fights. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in this fight, I'm definitely going to um, make sure I do my best in be um beat him beat him down so the judges is forced to forced to give me the decision because um a lot of times when the golden boy fighters automatically get to the golden boy fighter because he's the golden boy golden boy but in this case i'm just gonna um do what i do best and make sure i don't leave in the judge's hands uh emmanuel so do you know uh, has there been any um you know, like Vada or any type of drug testing for this fight? I mean, him coming off a long layoff, do you know if his camp is being tested or he himself is being tested a lot? Um, not really. Oh, I usually want to take, um, take the urine test on a fight night, and there wasn't no blood drawn against um, either, either, either um, team, so I'm not dialing more uh, Hey, Manuel, being as though Lucas is known to be a pressure fighter, are we looking to see you uh, box a lot in this uh, in this fight? Um, absolutely. You know, um, I, we have a strong game plan. Me and my coach have been working on for six weeks. So it's going to, you'll, you'll see, you'll see come eight, six. We've been, I'm just going to give him a boxing clinic. You never know. His coach might have him try to box me because he was on the same card as I, I was when I fought Adrian Barn. He might think I'm gonna come come after him. So who knows what I'm game plan he got? So if he try to box me, but that's gonna be bad for him. Yeah, I, I highly doubt he's going to try and box you. I would like to see you kind of move a little bit like Chris Algieri, you know, use some lateral movement. Um, He's training with Joel Diaz, and, you know, all of Joel Diaz fighters kind of fight the same except for uh, the exception of Felix Diaz, you know, uh, he has just a, his own style altogether. But usually Joel trains you to go forward. I mean, I was just talking to Justin Deloach. Damn, I forgot. Maybe I got to put that interview out. He was saying he had to leave him because of that, because he only trains for like, you know, come four hours. But uh, yeah, I mean, Matisse, he's usually okay. coming forward. Are you are you going to be using like a jab to the body? You know, we, we, we see some boxers kind of use the jab to the body to stop the fighter from coming forward. Is that something you're going to use? Absolutely. That's my favorite. That's my favorite punch. Um, that's what I've been working on in the gym all the time. And I love doing that, that move to the body. That's my favorite. It's my favorite. I love doing that. Do you think you're faster than Matisse? I, I think you, you should be faster. I mean, based on the fights I've watched, you're definitely more athletic, in your opinion. Absolutely, I'm faster than him. You know, um, well, uh, yeah, I think I'm faster than um, Matisse. Um, he can't get enough thing. He don't have no good speed, but I'm, I'm, I'm very quick. Now, I know you watched the fight with Lamont Peterson, someone that you're obviously very familiar with, with the DMV area out there. And uh, he made the mistake of hooking with Matisse. Now, obviously, that was also a different version of Matisse, a, a much younger, uh, more prime version of Matisse. But um, are you going to – do you do you plan on not mixing it up? Or, you know, because you, you went in there with, with, with both Broner and Orozco and ended up mixing it up. So do you envision yourself? kind of letting it go with Matisse or staying on the outside and kind of moving, using the ring? At some point in the fight, I'm going to have to um, sit there and um, exchange, but that's not the plan. 
you know what I mean? You got you at some point you gotta sit um stand tall and, and go um blow 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 with the guy, you know. Um that's why um we're gonna have to be eventually do that at some point in the fight, but that's not what we um really focusing on right now. We're just focusing on boxing. You said at some point you'll have to just bite down, but is there a way to train for 12 rounds of boxing? I mean, um, is that where the miles come in? What exactly do the miles that you put in, in, in the, on the road, what, what, what kind of uh, purpose does that serve in your opinion? Well, I've been, I did a lot, I've been doing a lot of sprints. I think this fight is the same around there, I believe. But, um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of sprints. So um, I'm just going to let my press go real fast and get out the way. Basically, so bad in You know, I follow you on Instagram, obviously, and uh, we've we've been sponsored by Everlast a few times. I see that Everlast sent you all sorts of gear, and you've been kind of shadow boxing and uh, doing a lot of the training with the weighted vest. How many pounds is that? <laughs> that was twenty pounds. That's, oh, twenty. That was, that was a real tough test. Um, it was twenty pounds. So what 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 the, like what what purpose does that like when you take it off you feel lighter or you move quicker what what because uh, you know I have a weighted vest but I use it to do pull ups I, you know obviously I don't know it does that help you be more agile when you take it off what exactly is it doing or is it just to build strength? It's all the all the above you know um, build strength put on your feet um good um. Um, good movement is all of that. So once I take it off, that's so real light. So you'll see the fire is going to be a straight good road. You know, Emmanuel, uh, in boxing, you know, a lot of the boxers agree that uh, sparring is one of the most important exercises for a boxer. How was your uh, sparring for this camp uh, coming in? Um, I had real great sparring. I had um, I went actually went up to Hibbins and sparred with a couple guys up here. And he also was giving me a few pointers on the key state. the old key state, but um, this, this is a new key state. So I think he's um, getting up there in age and he's going to be really a different fighter. So um, I had a good fun, though. Awesome. Well, Emmanuel, at this time, obviously, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to interview you before this big fight. We wish you the best of luck. Um, we wanted you to give any social media in case anyone doesn't have it, they could follow you. Yeah, you can follow me at um, Transformer on Instagram. That's T-R-A-N-Z-F-O-R-M with two A's at the end, three A's at the end. And um, also you can follow me on, on Twitter at Success Manny. And also you can follow me on Facebook at Manny McCoy. All right, brother. Well, thanks again, man. Wish you the best of luck. Monster Peace, thank you as always. Let the producer know when you're ready. We're going to go back to those phone lines. Um, yo, I, I'm, you know, we didn't even tell him that we were picking him, right? But uh, there's a few of us picking him, man. Hopefully he can uh, pull this one off. Yeah, man, it was you and me. We both picked him. I think just he's based on, out, you know, a little more his activity. His yeah. activity, his activity that's if I mean, again, like how you said, his activity was a problem against Broner. If he learns from that fight and keeps and just keeps peppering Matisse with punches, I think Matisse would be like a not maybe not necessarily gun shot because Matisse likes to, you know, he likes to brawl it out, but I think his timing will be way off. And I think he'll definitely have a lot of opportunities to make a miss and make a pay. But the fact that it's a 10 round fight and we know for a fact that Emmanuel Taylor can go a 12 round distance, maybe the that those two rounds he doesn't have to fight gives him more incentive to be more active throughout the, the rest of the course of the fight. I'm hoping anyway. Speaking of activity, you know, he has not fought since August. So, you know, they're both coming off of some layoffs, you know, and he had about two tune-up fights since his last loss to Orozco. So, you know, hopefully he's gotten some good sparring. I follow him on all sorts of Instagram and social media, things like that. So, you know, he seems to be in uh tip top shape. Let's see how it transcends in, uh, the ring yeah i mean like that layoff is i guess it's pretty long considering that you know it's uh what like about nine months if he hasn't fought since august right because we're already in may 
But um, you look at uh, Matisse. Matisse, he hasn't fought since 2015, man. And that was a bad loss. Whereas Emmanuel Taylor, he, he's racked up a couple knockout wins, which is what you need to do when you um, when you come off a couple losses. You need to rebuild your confidence. And you need to rebuild that uh, that faith, that spark that you got early in your career. And that's what they're trying to do with Matisse right now. They're trying to get him to ease him back in. But the question is, is Emmanuel Taylor the correct opponent to try to ease your way back into into uh into the spotlight and i don't think that it is i think i mean i think if, hopefully, if he wins it works right if he wins it works well he's right there like if you look if if, if you know you just you just got to get over that hump you know you got to push him just a little bit and you can get over that hump let's get out to uh hugo in houston and since we're shouting out texas shout out to eric cruz what up, boxing boys? Just want to put in my prediction for this big fight Saturday night on the main the main fight. Really, uh, I see this going two two ways. Two ways. I, I see this 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 could be like a replay of the Vargas De La Hoya fight. You know, where the bigger guy bullies the smaller fighter in the ropes, lands. You know, tries to bully him and landing good blows and rocking him. Where you know the smaller, more skilled guy lands the combinations and get the late round TKO. But unfortunately my official prediction is Chavez is gonna knock it not knock his ass out, but TKO in the late round. I just don't see Canelo hurting him. He couldn't he couldn't rock a uh glass jaw Cotto when Mayweather did. So I see Chavez just running walking through these punches, landing a good body blow in the late rounds, eighth to tenth, between the eighth and tenth round. And he just get that TKO stoppage. But another thing I wanted to say is like, what's up with this defending Canelo for dropping the WBC belt? That because uh, he dropped it because he had 15 days to make the decision. But when he uh, KO'd Amir Khan, he said he was ready to put the gloves on and take on Triple G. So how is it 15 days too soon? You were ready to put him back on. And another thing, Shannon Briggs. Who is Shannon Briggs? He was enrolled in 15 years ago, so why would it be now? And I'm out. Brutal. So yeah. true. So true. Thanks for calling in, brother. Thanks for Shut calling up, in. man. <laughs> Yo, they, they're killing the old man, yo. Time to uh bring him back. Bring him back. Popping all this champagne. Popping all this rosé. Getting money like Jose. Chain cold. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on? Boomerang in your back, player. Oh, there you go, man. I'm boomerang back in. Isn't that nice? Well, you know what? I think that last caller, man, Hugo, he sounds like a... Okay, no more. He sounds like a smart man, that Hugo, man. So, oh, here's what I was going to talk about. You must have read my mind, Ness. Yo, Matt, you can't just be on the air there and talk nonsense, buddy. Come on. There's people listening to you. People actually taking your... What your, nonsense your, your, did I say there at uh, Perks Bearing Jose? How can, you say, how can you say that the WBC mandates, no matter what happens, they take a 3%? That fight between Pacquiao and Mayweather must have grossed everything in over 900, you know? Now, why are you saying that's nonsense? Because that's actually in their website. Did you go to their website and read all their rules and regulations? Yeah. Every single article and so, every single clause? Because I did. So and that's in there. Tell me, in your, own, in your own opinion, you think they had they made $24 million? Well, first off, you did the math wrong. Secondly, um, 3% is negotiable, but that is the standard. Do, do I think they did that for Mayor the Pacquiao? I don't know. I doubt it. Because those guys are such big names. They have such such big leverage over the uh, the sanctioning body. But a vast majority of boxers, 90% of boxers, do not have any sort of leverage over the sanctioning body. So what leverage do they have to really go to the ne negotiation, negotiation table, sit down with the sanctioning body and go, look, we want less than 3%, even though that's in your rules? Okay. But, Maddie, if one negotiates, all can negotiate. That's the whole point. But not everyone's created equal. That's where you're wrong. Canelo and Jamel Charlo are very different people. Very different stars. And with different leverages against the sanctioning body. But people like you assume that everyone with the belt has leverage. That's false. Sanctioning body still has leverage over you, even I'm when you're a champion. 
You have to be a mega star to have leverage over them. You what I'm saying there. is, what what you said was wrong about about it being no matter what black and white because it's not black and white. I I did admit I was wrong in that uh, last show. I did admit that I was wrong. Okay, I didn't hear that, man. That's all right. That's all right. I'm I'm glad to hear it again. Just say it again. Anyway, I was wrong about it not being negotiable. It is negotiable, but that is the standard. If you don't think 90% of WBC sanctioned championship bouts and eliminators don't have that 3%, then you're delusional. Now, Jose, charge them 3% for all the titles. Yo, hey, Maddie, Maddie, how about this? How about you and I? I want to, I, I saw those gloves Ness was talking about online there, man. Like a nice, uh, it looked nice on the champ. You want to bet uh, <laughs> a little like, necklace? There, yo, buddy? yo, who who just called bet, you? Bet a necklace on what? Yo, how is how are you the champ? You haven't even on fought anybody. <laughs> What's the bet, Jose? I won the belt before, man. You saw the bet is I picked Chavez Jr. You picked Canelo, man. Loser has to send the other guy one of those. Uh, nah, I want TBV hoodie. Uh, Fuck that. I want that TBV hoodie. Yo, who do I got a bet to give me a hat? What's up? Okay, you're Ooh, Doomsday, yeah. I'll yeah, I want a hat. I want that snapback. Doomsday, I'll bet you the hat you're wearing right now. Okay, a hat, a hat versus a, a hat versus a necklace. Deal? Deal. Yo, hats Deal. Are, hats are fifty dollars. So Deal. don't. No Deal, deals. Jose. I'll take a no. You take Chavez. Yeah. Deal. It's Man, okay, I'm man. It's all right. I'll take the deal. Let's do that. Do you guys have the hat on the website, Ness, or not? Hell no. That's what I'm saying. Minimum. That shit is custom. Well, if there's no belt, how am I supposed? I mean, if there's no uh, hat, how am I supposed to pay? No, there's it? a hat. It's just custom order. Don't worry about it. We're. I'm gonna get the hat. Don't worry. <laughs> the bet's made. Yo, yo, yo why are you hat. trying to fucking? Why are you trying to fucking snake oil bet poor Jose? Like, yo, the bet's made. He's the one that offered the bet to Canelo's me. Favorite. Yeah, it shouldn't be. You shouldn't yo, be just taking like Canelo. It. Just like Canelo forced the bet on, on in the fight. Do you see that? How he, he keeps. Yeah, because I'm the true A side. Yeah, no, you got the belts, but who's the A side? I am. Chavez. I, you know what's going to happen? Just let me say this one last thing. I know my time's up, but this is what I wanted to say. You know what's going to happen? Chavez is going to beat him. And do you think Canelo is going to have the balls to pay him? Because Canelo, just like he says, no mames, he's full of shit. He's full of shit. He talks out the side of his mouth, man. He's not going to honor his commitment, even though he's the one trying to force that bet. If Canelo loses, do you guys think he's actually going to get off his purse? That's my question to you guys. Well, one, the bet's not actually official. Yo, given quality, you're such a little fucking, like, troll. First of all, we're not selling the hat, okay? We're not. But that's what it calls, you know? He said, yo, he said, they damn, TBV think they the money team. <laughs> yo, actually, money team got some really nice hats, yo. I want to get, I want to get some, uh, some new new ones with like the 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 bill, you know, like the like the um, whatever. I got some money team hats. Oh, you do? Yeah, I got them for Christmas. Oh. Yeah, because everyone thinks that oh, you follow boxing, you must love Mayweather, so they just get me TMT gear. Oh. I don't wear it because you know. And good evening again. I hope everyone enjoyed that interview. It was really nice of Emmanuel Taylor to take some time and um, come on our show and talk to us. So, yeah, definitely. Um, casual, Steven, Matt, Ness, how are you guys? Why do you say Matt like that? Oh, for real, though, told like a shot at yeah, Matt. Matt. Oh. Matt. Matt. What? You don't Master. like me anymore? I'm sorry. Master. Monster. I didn't know it came out like that. My bad. What's up? Is Shannon Briggs important in the heavyweight division? Fuck yeah. I wake up to that man talking every morning. What? That's motivation to me right there. <laughs> That's motivation to me right there. Yeah. Let's go, champ. He gives me, yo, I said I got him. He gives me life. Every time I feel like I need a good laugh and you know, I'm. I, you know, whatever I'm going through, I know I can beat it, and I just listen to the chant, and I go, like, "Let's go, chant! You can do this. You can beat whatever's killing you." So I'm happy. I don't give a shit. Yo, Matt, what is up? Matt, you're being extremely rude right now, bro. I don't give a shit. I'm what so, doing monster, this? monster. I don't mean it to be rude. I mean it to be funny. And if you're funny, I'll apologize, and I won't use sound bites at all for your calls. 
Mm. <laughs> right, unless, gonna... unless necessary. Hey, unless. By the way, we're no, adding a new I tier. It was by so. the way, we're adding a new not... tier to Patreon. You pay a hundred dollars a month, and then Matt will not be able to use sound bites <laughs> during your calls as well. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, we can do that. We that. can do that. Don't that believe be that, because people are gonna be like, "Oh, they think they TMT now." <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, guys. Um, no, but seriously, let's go, champ. That's the best shit ever. I mean, fuck. I don't care. Shannon Briggs, he motivates me. <laughs> if that man is still out there, still thinking he can still fight, man, that'd be great. You know what would be even more funnier? Making it a grudge match between him and fucking Klitschko. They never oh got to fight. God. Two People old motherfuckers. Can... Get him in there. The ultimate react. The ultimate real grudge match. Gross, gross, and, I, and I heard Big Brother Klitschko is considering a comeback. So if you want to do a comeback, you do it against Shannon McCannon. Then you get the WBA, and then you become the mandatory for Joshua. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah plan it out. That guy. Really he followed Tally though. See, he followed um, Tally. The one he was. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's the ultimate grudge match. He comes back. That's what I'm saying. It's the grudge match. He comes back and fights him again. That's so, match. <laughs> Yo, you got her down, right? She said she's going with Chavez. You got her down, right? Wait, can we? Can I give my thoughts? You guys, shit. No, 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 no. I'm just making sure he got your pick. You said Chavez. <laughs> I haven't even made a pick. You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, really quickly, I'm gonna talk about the. Um, I'm going for uh, for. Um, uh, Lemieux, and I'm going for Avila. Uh, the Emmanuel Taylor and Luca Matisse fight, I'm going for Emmanuel Taylor to say earlier, reason being is because Steven really hit it right on the nail. Honestly, I think Matisse is done, and I think he knows that. I think Matisse was one of those cases where we thought there was something there, and then when he actually came out of Argentina, out of fucking beating every cab driver that drove him to this fucking fight, and started coming here, and getting some real fights and getting some real exposure, you you know he got exposed. And Matisse reminds me of when um, when Crawford fought uh, the Matisse was the Garcia. But it reminds me of when Crawford fought um, Postal. Everybody was saying that Postal is this, Postal that, and Crawford got in there and totally like fucking beat the shit out of him. So I think Matisse is one of those guys that you just build up, build up, and then when he gets in there with a Garcia or with a Crawford or something or someone like that, they just they just fold relatively quickly. So I think Matisse is done, and I'm picking Manny Taylor for that. Um, and for the main event, Canelo versus Chavez, I'm choosing Canelo. Reason why I'm choosing Canelo is because Canelo actually had, I believe Canelo has a little bit more discipline and more tricks in his arsenal to figure out a way to win than Chavez will. Chavez is a good fighter. I'm not taking anything away from him. Chavez is not like a Rosado, for example, that has like nine or 10 losses. He has some personal issues that got in the way of him being somebody that people could take serious. But I actually think Chavez is really good. My thing with Chavez is, it's just, unless out of a miracle, Chavez could find a way to outbox Canelo, maybe he could win. But even so, he would have to be in the level of Mayweather because Canelo's really good at attacking the body. That's probably Canelo, in my opinion, strongest, um, strongest defense is he can actually attack the body. And if he even tries to outbox him, he'll probably get attacked in that body, slow down, and Canelo wins. So, so either, even way, any way you want to put it, I think Canelo has 1,001 more ways to win that fight than, than, than Chavez will. But I'm pulling for Chavez, even though I'm picking Canelo. I'm, I'm hoping Chavez does pull an upset. Never really been a big fan of Canelo, despite of whatever everybody else said or what I just finished saying. Uh, I give him his props or his props are due, but I'm just not a, a big Canelo supporter. And I also think that Canelo has more Mexican-American fans than actual Mexicans from Mexico fans. So that's just my opinion, or, or maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Crack and Brown will probably call in and be like, actually, Monster Peace? So who knows? Uh, he'll correct me on that one. But anyways, that's my pick for this weekend. Um, I'm going to be looking forward to this fight. Ness, I wish I was going all the way to New Jersey, but damn, why can't you just live right across the bridge? Why you got to leave, like, mad deep in New Jersey? 
Figure that shit out, man. Be closer to New York. <laughs> She's like, figure I mean, that shit out. I mean, you could stay home and watch it with the same people, or you could come and enjoy the night out with your husband and, you know, some good <laughs> friends and a good pay per view. And, you know, chill. I can't wait to be out there. I can't wait. Chill, chill. But, uh, my. Monster- I- oh, shit. I thought she was done. She always does those long pauses. Hello, monster. Sorry. No, I was letting you. I was letting you talk. No, I'm just saying the fight that I'm really looking forward to is Crawford because I love Crawford. I'm gonna say it right now in air. So, yeah, so this is, could be recorded for life. I freaking love Crawford. I think he is the best fighter ever, and I don't give a shit what nobody says. Anyways, that's my call. Good ever, night. ever. All right. Ever. Ever. Hey, Matt. <laughs> hey, Matt um, Monster brought up something interesting in terms of uh, Mexican-American fans rooting for Canelo. In my, uh, from all the Mexican-American fans that I know, to them, this fight's like picking, like, it's like you have to pick the worst of two evils. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. That's what it is. They don't like, definitely have, you know, hated on Chavez for a couple of years now, and they have recently started building up hate against, in animosity against Canelo. And believe it or not, from the ones that I have spoken to and a couple like actual just, you know, born in Mexico guys as well, they've told me that they're rooting for Chavez and pulling for Chavez. And I think it is that Mayweather factor. They're tuning in because they want to see Canelo lose. And that's why they're back in the Matt Chavez again. The the whole dropping of the belt and quote unquote ducking of Triple G did hurt Canelo's stock. I think that it didn't. I think it works in the opposite. They want to see him lose more. He's more of a Mayweatherist type of guy now, especially after this face. We're saying the same thing. We're saying the same thing. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> um, let's get to Dempsey. nine zero five. We got to go to Dempsey. Oh yes, yeah. sorry about that. We do have a ringer on the line. Nine zero five. We'll come back to you. Dempsey, you are live, brother. The the coolest name of in in the TBV caller list. It's like Madonna. Yeah, what's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> what's up, man? Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Uh, first, let's get the picks out of the way. I got um, I got Canelo by a late TKO or stoppage, but I think either. The corner will, will stop it or the ref will stop it. I don't think it'll be a situation to we'll see Chavez go down. So I think that's how it's going to end. And the uh, Lemieux fight, I got him winning by KO or TKO. And uh, the Matisse-Taylor fight, kind of tough to say because Matisse has been in, in, inactive, but he's very experienced overall. That's the thing. He has fought the better filer, fighters than Taylor has over a period of time. Uh, so, but with that said, uh, I got Matisse by decision, but I don't think it's going to look pretty. I think it's going to be very, very, very tough for him. And then, uh, the Jojo Diaz fight, I got Jojo Diaz for the win, you know, hopefully he gets a stoppage. I would like to see him get a stoppage. It's been a while since he's had one. And, uh, man, I just got to say, uh, you know, originally when this fight was first made, I was really, I was not happy about it. I was, you know. And the reason being was because I just felt that Chavez didn't win a particular or a signature type of win to get this kind of a fight. But we know how boxing is. The boxing is a business, and the way the business works is, you know, hey, we got to try to make money. You know, we they knew Chavez Canelo was going to be a big hit in terms of box office, and people wanted to see it, with, especially with the Mexican fans. So they decided to go with it, and, and here we are now. You know, as boxing fans, we're going to watch it. We're talking about it, and then we're going to see it, and uh, we'll find out what happens. But you know, I, I wasn't too, I wasn't too excited about it. You know, so instead of buying a pay per view, I'm just going to catch it at the movie theater and save myself the extra thirty bucks. You know, so. But uh, but yeah, other than that, man, it's uh, it should be a good weekend of fights, definitely, man. Uh, you guys looking forward to it or what? I'm hyped. I'll be honest. The face-off has me hyped more than anything because there is animosity. Like These guys do not like each other. And unlike Steven, I think this fight will be exciting. I agree, man. That face-off got me pretty hyped up as well, too. And, man, when you look at Canelo's eyes during that face-off, he had the, man, he had the eye of the tiger, bro. He had the eye of the tiger, dude. Seriously. He was about to stab Chavez in the throat. He was about to stab Chavez in the throat. He had that, like, death eyes, like, I want to just like stab this dude. Like it was, yeah. it was brutal. Like it, it, if looks can kill, that look killed. 
Yeah, we'll never let yourself be yeah. led by face off. So let's just put it that yeah, way. Yeah, I remember I remember um Canelo's face off with Ryan Rhodes and with uh Matthew Hatton and he didn't really kill those guys. In fact, both of those guys went the distance, and they, he probably should have been able to stop them. Then again, he was a younger Canelo and still developing. He was, what, 19 teams. years old? Yeah, so but yeah. Matthew Hatton was also coming up from like 140 pounds. So, you know, how much more How much more do they want? Do Are they we want really going to compare the, the Canelo that fought Matthew Hatton instead of the Canelo that fought Miguel Cotto? Obviously not. He's developed since then. Oh, he's way better. Oh, yeah, definitely. Canelo's way better now. But that ends my call, guys, and uh, I'll definitely speak to you guys on Sunday. Definitely, for sure. All right, brother. Well, thanks for calling in. Uh, let's get back out to the 905. Hopefully he stuck around waiting for us. Yes, he did. 905, first time calling in? Hell no. Nah, hell no. Nah. I've, been, I've been calling in. Uh, last time I called in, actually, was for the Chris Eubank, uh, Renault Quinlan fight. You know what I mean? Oh, so, wow. yeah, it is what it is. What's your name? School, y'all, a little something. Uh, yeah, Jay Steele's the odd fella. Odd fella in the chat, y'all. You know what I mean? Jay Steele, you know, get him down. What, where you calling nine. it? Where's the 905 at, bro? Hamilton. Hamilton, Ontario. We just like about 40 minutes away, just down the, down the uh, freeway from uh, Toronto there. You know what I mean? All right, brother. Well, talk to us. So, 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 I don't really, I don't really even care about this whole Canelo fight shit. It's bullshit. You should be fighting Triple G. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. It's a, And the whole car is bullshit anyway, you know what I mean? It's just like, so let me just go with all the A-sides. I'm kind of suspicious about Matisse, you know what I mean? Because this is the wrong guy to, uh, to go in a fight with, like uh, Emmanuel Taylor, a little slickster, you know what I mean? So I'm a little uh, suspicious about that. But for, for the most part, I'm going to go with all the A-sides, you know what I mean? Canelo, uh, Lemieux, um, uh, Matisse. And Jojo Diaz, you know what I mean? But uh, as far as it, yo, Matt, yo, you crazy, dog. You know what I mean? You straight crazy, dog. You know what Why? I mean? Why am I crazy? Can support you? Because I don't know how you can support a man like Pulev. You know what I mean? This whoa, 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 um, whoa. You, you, you think Anthony oh, Joshua whoa, versus whoa, Shannon whoa, Briggs. Whoa, 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 me. Understand. <laughs> just fought. Pulev just fought Kevin Johnson on Friday. You ain't see that. You ain't seen that. You who know? did Briggs just fight? Jackson, the man who just got knocked out in two rounds by Anthony Joshua, dog. That was all that. That's Kevin Johnson's only stoppage. You know what I mean? Is Anthony Joshua, and this is who you want to see. You know what I mean? Poop. I didn't say that's what I want to see. No, no, no. Take that back. Take that back, Jay Steele. You know I, mean? I said I would rather see Anthony Joshua fight Pulev. Then for on, Anthony, jo- hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me. I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk, dog. Don't worry about it. Briggs is about to be the WBA regular champ. You know what I mean? If he beats, doesn't mean shit to me. You know what I mean? Mean shit so the to same me. logic applies. The same logic applies. Just like how Danny Jacobs, Danny Jacobs was the WBA regular champion. You know what I mean? You can't compare Daniel Jacobs with Shannon Briggs. Are you fucking insane? Really? That's why. That's why. Just because that belt doesn't mean they're equal. Come on. You want to talk down your fellow American, fellow Americans trying to do it. You know what I mean? For this Bulgarian Hold on. Jay Steele, let me ask you. Let me ask you. you Jay Steele, let me ask you a question. Oh, man. Jay Steele, let me ask you. I've let you talk. I've let you burn a lot, dude. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather see Anthony Joshua fight Shannon Briggs or would you rather see him fight Pulev? I'd rather see him fight Shannon Briggs. Hell yeah. Then you're a casual fan. Don't tell me. And, 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 no, I'm not a casual fan. I'm more hardcore. That's what casual fans want. Yo, he's a hardcore fan. Just because you're on the panel, just because you're on the panel, don't disrespect me, dog. Yo, but you know what? I agree you're with disrespecting you. disrespecting me, dog. Okay. When nah. you want a shit fight, I'm going to shit on that opinion, hands down. And you got to accept that when you're going to come out with a shit opinion like that. Yo, I agree with him, though. Canelo should have been fighting. And you're the casual fan. Yes, I am the casual fan, but not that Shannon Briggs should be fighting um, Joshua. But more that... Clock uh, you, Cash. They threw the clock at you. That's, that's cool. Canelo should be fighting Triple G. You know, we after Connie said, yo, Triple G's next, we got Liam Smith. And then we all said, okay, that's just the fight before the fight. And then now we got... Uh, Chavez, and we all know who who's gonna win both fights. So yeah, I hope Chavez upsets it. Yeah. Damn, yo, hey Matt. Matt got yes. 
Yeah. I said, I said, yo, yo, D, you going to um, you going to champ? <laughs> you want to see the champ? He was like, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got no plans on being there. Yo, man. If the champ has a belt, yes. You can compare him to another belt holder that fought Triple G. You, you oh, can then compare okay. him and then say one is way more in their prime, a way better boxer, and is a, an elite person in their division. Daniel Jacobs is a top three middleweight, bare minimum. Shannon Briggs isn't even a top 10 heavyweight. But they hold the, the same. we comparing here? Uh, two different divisions, and they both hold the same style title. Yeah, a bullshit title. That doesn't mean anything. All right. Well, the bullshit title holder has the right to fight whoever is next. No. Okay. All right. If you got a trophy. He's not the mandatory. He's not the WBA mandatory for Anthony Joshua. It's Lewis oh, it's Ortiz. Cut West in the chat? Yeah, Cut West is in the chat. Cut, West, Cut West called somebody out, man. It's up with Avtar. Hey, Majid. In Orlando, what's going on, brother? Talk to us. Champ. Yeah, man. I'm just calling to give my pick. I, I got Canelo by unanimous decision. I can't see it going no other way. Were you picking Liam Smith? Uh, probably, I ain't even What'd you say? Were you picking you Liam say? Smith? Were you picking Liam Smith when Canelo fought, uh, when they were going to fight, when the fight was announced? Hell, hell no. Right. Nah, look, it's like this. I feel like when it comes to Canelo, if it ain't Triple G, whoever he got lined up to fight, he going to beat him, you know, and that's, that's just my opinion. So, fuck him. Hell no. Your opinion, I never even seen him your boxing knowledge opinion, right, on the way fights are made for Canelo. Do you think Lemieux's next, more likely than Triple G? No, I, I, I can't I can't really to be honest with your viewers that me, I don't feel like he would take that fight because that dude hit too hard, you know, so that's that's too much of a risk and he ain't shown nothing to indicate that if he get hit, he gonna get dropped, you know. So I, I don't see that fight happening. I, I, I think Canelo will sit back and wait. Those are the only two fights for, for those are the only two fights for Canelo to make him T B E of Mexico. Yeah, but but I don't know. I'm just like one of those believers that kind of believe that Canelo going to fight Triple G next. You know, if he don't, then that just go to show that he a bullshitter, you know. But I, I believe that they're going to fight Triple G next after this, uh, after they get the unanimous decision off of Chavez. Give us your picks. I, I got, um... I don't know the undercard. I ain't even interested. I'm hyped about <laughs> this one fight, and I, I'm thinking that Canelo going to just beat him the unanimous decision. I just want to see if he proved me wrong and can knock him out or do something that I'm not expecting. And that's a, a KO because I don't, I don't think that Chavez going to go down from Canelo punches. From Florida knock him out with a high punch output, I don't think that Canelo could throw them throw them hands as much as Punk Punk Forward did to get the same outcome. You know, I could be wrong, but without airing out, I don't see that. I don't see that. Without airing out, yeah, I, I believe that. If, yeah, if he swings like that, I think that he gets out. So I think he just want to play the defense and let Chavez kill his with stupid punches. I have a feeling that Make it Chavez, easy next. I have a feeling that Chavez is gonna to try to bring a war to him, and it might be like a, a Kirkland Canelo fight. But hopefully not. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. The wilder that Chavez swing, that's the easier he gonna make the fight for Canelo. You know, his best bet is shit. I don't know. I don't know what his best bet is. You know, I don't. I don't know. I don't see Chavez winning this at all, man. Five seconds. Go. I'm, I'm sorry. I, Canelo, twelve round unanimous decision. Mm, mm, mm. That's my call. Thank you. Majid, thanks for calling in. We're going out to Brad in Bakersfield. Hey, can, hey, what's up, boxing boys? Hey, can you guys uh, get at me in a couple calls? Sure, Brad, no problem. Let me get to Tone in Chicago. Hey, what's up, fellas? Give me one second. Let me get off speaker here. All right, my bad. Yeah, just want to make my picks real quick. Uh, you can put me down for uh, Jojo Diaz by decision. Uh, I'm going to go with the upset. And I'm going to go with Emmanuel Taylor. I think this is a tough fight for Lucas Matisse to come back to. 
uh, Taylor gives everybody a tough fight. He gave Broner that one tough fight. And I think he's going to look better than Lucas in this fight. Um, obviously, give me uh, David Lemieux. And I got Canelo with like a, probably a ninth round stoppage. I think the referee's going to step in and stop the fight. Um, I'm hoping Chavez has enough energy to put up a good fight because I know he's trained his ass off. And, but just looking at the pictures of the guy this week, he just looks like a dead man walking, man. He's so thin, so looks so fragile, you know. And while Canelo looks strong, and this is fight week, you know, and he still looks in, in great shape. So I think this is ultimately, this may be lost in the scales, man, once, uh, once we see Chavez Jr., the way he looks and stuff, at the weigh in tomorrow. But we didn't so, Canelo with a shirtless. We haven't seen Canelo shirtless. He, he's looking a little bit uh, on, the, on the heavy side, if you ask me, for his height. Oh, that's what I mean. I mean, he, look, he looks healthy, man. He looks healthy. Where Chavez Jr. looks like a skeleton, man. He looks like a guy just with skin over his bones. He looks like an athlete to me. And then I know uh, come Saturday morning, he's going to rehydrate. He's going to be a big man. Maybe because of his height, he looks more like that. Oh. Um, someone posted a picture of Chavez Jr. and then wrote underneath it, Weekend at Bernie's. He doesn't look that way to me. I'm just hoping Chavez Jr. has the energy. I hope so, too. Yeah, I just hope he has the energy to last a, last a full fight and give a good fight. And uh, hopefully after this, once Canelo takes Chavez Jr. out, hopefully uh, he mans up and accepts the challenge and fights Triple G in September, man, because... He has lost a lot of fans due to that, and he can regain some by just making the fight happen in September. That's on the radar. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, you saw the face-off, right? What do you think about Chavez Jr. speaking English and Canelo not? I'll be honest, man. I didn't like it. I, I, I speak Spanish, and I think Chavez Jr. would have been able to just express himself a lot more if he would have just spoke Spanish, man. Uh, then that would take away well, from kind of has when he came off. But that's you as a Spanish-speaking person. I actually enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed him, his effort in learning English and coming on Max Kellerman and speaking straight English. To kind of like, Ten seconds, go. Yeah, but I just, I just feel like he would have expressed himself a lot more. He would have been a lot more confident with his answers in Spanish, man. You know, it is what it is. But thanks, guys. Fuck me. Hey, hey, who the fuck you think you're talking to? Huh? Oh man, thanks for calling in. Let's keep the wheels moving. We going out to Chicago. No, well, we, we were in Chicago, right? So now we're going to go to Ohio. If you know like I know, you should lie low. Yeah, I used to get it in Ohio. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Box of voice, man. What's good, man? What's good, man? I'm geek, man. I'm geek for this fight, man. Um, You going for chocolate, quick, man. On that uh, Matisse. My, my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nah, Matisse, that's a good topic. Go ahead. That's a hot one. Yeah, with the, with the Matisse topic real quick. Yeah, man, I, I like that phone call, man. Um, but Taylor, man, and I'm, Ness, man, I'm glad you asked that question about his 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 work and his output and his fights and how he's not really that active, man. I mean, I'm honestly picking Matisse because of that, because, you know, he, he just doesn't have that output consistently throughout the fight. He just tends just to to stand there and shell up and um you know he kind of mentioned the fact that matisse was frozen or he, he's be, or he, he freezes up now or he's a he's a kind of hitting that he's a he's a different fighter and for other people to kind of hint at that i kind of kind of beg to differ I, but post all i think he ran into a a different type of a fighter they never ran into before somebody was skilled that that was pretty nice you know post all going 12 with with terence crawford kind of proved that he's kind of on a different level than other fighters at 140. He's just not on Terrence's level. Um, and when he, you know, I guess when Matisse, I guess, lost to Danny, I mean, Danny is, he, obviously, Danny proved to be pretty nice. Uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, he, he's really not really done bad. I mean, I, I, I didn't like his performance against uh, your boy John Molina, but again, he still pulled that out. And we see when he did put two Pravat in the call. So as far as him being hit, like being a shot fighter, I wouldn't really quite lean that far. And I think we're going to see that probably this, this fight against Emmanuel Taylor. Um, but the Chavez, 
uh, Canelo fight, man. Yo, man, I, can you, anybody on this panel tell me when there's been a fight when somebody who obviously has less skill has beaten someone who has obviously way more tools in the belt? Than the Marcos other. Maidana beat Adrian Broner. Good one. Hagler Hearns, you can argue that one too. That Hearns is probably more of a technical boxer than that's Hagler. parts of debate, Matt. Mine was a clear Doug winner. Thank you. Buster Douglas versus Mike Tyson. Good one. Yeah. Okay, so I'll Stevie like Forbes. Twenty Duran. <laughs> Duran Robinson. <laughs> Duran Robinson. <laughs> okay, so some of these fights I named up from like twenty years ago. <laughs> All right, mine was mine was most recent though, three years ago, and then and then Provodica well, beat somebody. Often. Who's better? Who who has better technical skill? Klitschko, or Joshua. No, that one's too close. That that one's not you more know, obvious. Just text Joshua, obvious. and he said he's gonna be at fucking Shannon Briggs. Go figure. What? Say it again. You heard what I said? Nah, you broke up, bro. Who texts who? Well, catch it on Patreon. <laughs> ETK, you're up. Anthony Joshua's going to be scouting that fight. Let's go, champ. I don't want a heart attack, guys. Please, let's not talk about Shannon Briggs, Anthony Joshua. I, I should text Eddie right now. Like, Man, yo, is it hey. true? <laughs> Man, jo Joshua should fight uh, Shannon Cannon, man. Give him a shot. You know what I'm saying? Cash them out. It'll be a big fight over across the pond, too. You know, because they love them over there even more than we love them over here. So, uh, it'd be cool, man. It wouldn't be much of a fight, though. Joshua, you know, break him down in three, four rounds at most. You know, but it's whatever. But let me get into these fights as we can. A lot of people, I think, are sleeping on this Matisse fight. Uh, Cause they that's that's a welter, so that's 147. So I actually have uh, uh, Lucas losing that fight. Uh, this is his first fight at 47, and he's not fighting the tomato can. Uh, you know, it's not the best opponent, but uh, you know, I think he loses this fight. I think that fight with uh, Provodnikov did something to him, and uh, he's just on a decline now. It's just a matter of time before he's washed up. Uh, but I like Lucas. He did a lot of good work at 140. Um, let's see. I got uh, Chavez winning this fight, man. I, 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 they're saying the weight's not an issue, but I want to see this weigh in. Um, see what this dude looks like, if he looks dead or not. Um, but I think Canelo is going to throw the fight, man. I don't think he's going to try and win the fight, and this is going to be a way to stave off. I mean, if you I mean if he loses this fight, he doesn't have to fight Triple G. You know, I mean, De, De La Hoya put that out uh, in an article I read uh, maybe a couple days ago. So you know, I mean, you'd rather lose to Chavez, and you can say, well, it was due to the weight, and it was due to the size, and you know, whatever else excuses you can come up with. Nah, you don't have to take the true beat down from G G G. That sounds sad. Don't say that because. This is a true fight for the king, for the crown of Mexico, whether it's in the WBC form or just in the, the, the rights to say, I beat the, the king's son, the prince, Chavez Jr. Yeah, beat be the king's son who isn't really that good. And then Canelo is a, a chicken runner and, a, and a, a belt dumper, you know, dumping belts in the trash. Um, so, I mean... Canelo and I think I think Canadian Jose touched on it. Canelo's lost a lot of luster, and he can't get it back. And every fight he goes, where he you know cherry picking fights and avoiding champions and fighting weak opposition, just makes him look worse and worse. But he'll still sell. But um, you know, from a historical standpoint, I mean, he's just not impressive. Uh, he's a two division champ, and uh, I don't think he uh, can beat the top tier at 160. But we're gonna find out here shortly. So. Uh, I think that's all I got, though, fellas. Well, all right, brother. GT Kid in Atlanta. Yo, there's a fight happening in Atlanta, man, coming up in about a week. I mean, a couple weeks. We're going into the 917, 917. Yes. yes. We, we got, got a ringer. ringer. We got a ringer. We got a ringer. Someone yeah. that brings that heat. 
Oh, so he from the streets of the D. Straight to the point for those with attention deficit. I'm so repetitive, son. So I gotta repeat. Stainless from the streets of the D. I'm coming with that heat. All you need to know about me. I'm coming with that heat. Yeah, why everybody knows that, man? Oh, man, you know, man, I'm getting more famous off this show. The, the half the time I spent actually putting in that work, bro, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's what happened when you worldwide instead of just instead of just nationwide. You know what I'm saying? So it happens. You know what I'm saying? So big up to TVV for being worldwide. Um, that being said, uh, uh, I, I really hate to waste my time saying this and, and repeating this damn every time you hear me. But if you haven't been on Patreon and at least taken advantage of some of those perks, my God. Because they could tell you, I've been off and, uh, on this line like five or six times, man. You know what I'm saying? My, my daughter getting re ready to graduate, so I'm, I'm getting all kind of calls. Like, like she graduated next week, man. And I just jumped back in. I've been on for 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And I'm right back in just because I pushed one. That ain't no telling how many people behind me. Now, that's enough of that call waste. Um, to be real, man, uh, I'm not as excited about this fight as anybody else is <gasps> acting on. Boy. I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's Cinco de Mayo weekend, and, but who, but who really wants this fight, man? We we building this fight. I mean, it, it was a lot of drama at the face-off. You know, you can see the animosity, and I I, 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 I lean more towards Chavez side in that face-off. I thought he won that face-off. Why don't I don't want this fight? fight uh, Canelo. I mean, Canelo. I mean, I I mean, I speak a little Spanish. I, I mean, I'm not fluent, but Canelo just seemed a little. Uh, Kodo is, you know what I'm saying, like a real diva up there, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah. oh, well, you know, I'd have, you know, I'm, I'd, I'd have been a champ, and I, you know, I could fight people at this, like, he don't hold no belts, man, any belts he, he held, he gave up, you know what I'm saying, so, you, you really lose a lot of my respect in what you're saying, um, that being said, man, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, pick all A side, outside of that Matisse fight, um, uh, I'm gonna pick Taylor, man, uh, his interview uh, kind of convinced me. Plus, I saw that Broner fight, uh, and he, if nothing else, I, he's leaned me to, more towards his side, man. Uh, these boxers should really take advantage of this show and call in. Uh, as far as that Shannon Briggs shit, the only relevance that Shannon Briggs holds for me is uh, it's the champ on the beginning of the TVV uh, podcast intro. Um, I love the dude, man. I appreciate what he's done. You know, he's been an entertaining guy. But him and uh, what's the other dude name? That's uh, the little gatekeeper. Dude was just arguing about what no was garbage too. Baby, baby Miller. He's always confusing me and shit. Baby Miller's not a gatekeeper. Yet. No, 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 no. The uh, yo, no, look no, at the, casual uh, knowing about the, boxing. Yeah, pull up, pull up. Yeah, I, I, I like that one. Pull up though, man. Those dudes are like. I mean, they ain't geriatric, but they they basically gatekeepers. They they do fighting people at the you know, just just good enough to keep them within that ranking, you know. If that, I mean, what's what's Briggs rank rank like? Yo, I mean, I know he's geriatric. He's fighting for this belt, but he's, I mean, come on, man. I'm, I mean, no disrespect to him, man. But at this age, and <laughs> trying to, I mean, when you you're not fighting like top class opponents, you just fighting people that keep you in the ranking. Like, come on, like, what's the respect out of that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, fight somebody. Fight somebody for real if you want to make it a significant fight for me. Um, that being said, man, uh, y'all might not hear from me in this next week. Uh, I'm going to make sure I call it a Sunday for my crow. But as I mentioned, my daughter's graduating from high school. Uh, and she's 60 seconds. After that, and then she's going to be back to October. She's going to stay off. Damn, you man, you hey, man, I'm I'm a real proud dad right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I can think back right now to telling her, you know, uh, the, the the steps that you make now. When she was five, six years old, man, the, the steps that you make now are the steps that you're going to make towards your future. And I'm not here to raise children. I'm here to raise adults. And she got it, man. And she knew that there were children behind her watching her. She, she got that stuff. Congratulations. You look this road, man, and the rest of them, it's, 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 not a, it's not an easy thing, man. It, you know, I salute any parent, man, because it's, it's, it's a hard road. You know what I'm saying? Any parent, uncle, you know what I'm saying? Anybody playing a significant part in a child's life, man, because they, 
they they grow up to be adults. We look at them as children. Ten seconds. Especially a daughter, man. Congratulations. Here for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially my daughter, man. You know, and I, uh, I, I think I uh, sent you an email. That, you know, they they keep me up at night. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this is a proud moment for me. So y'all probably won't hear from me in the next week. But I will be watching, man. You know, I'll probably be uh in the chat as I usually am, man. Yeah, uh, you know, much love to you. I just wanted to make sure I said that. And, uh, please make sure that you like and share this in every episode of the Boxing Voice Podcast. Thank you. We're, we're gonna gonna save I, like I said, y'all have me. When you come back, we're going to save Crow hey, for you. <laughs> That's what's up. This was up. Uh, to be honest, man, with my heart, I, 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 I would like for Chavez to win because I'm get, getting to the point where I don't really like Canelo. But I know that Canelo going to win it. So, like I said, A side, outside of Matisse, I think that Taylor's going to take that fight. Um, and like I said, maybe uh, not this Sunday, next Sunday. You know, y'all hear from me again. All right, Stainless, thanks for calling in, brother. Um, hey, let's get back up to uh, Blind Man Brad from Bakersfield. We had to roll past him real quick. Let's see if he's ready. Where's Brad? You guys, how's it going? Brad. Really good, brother. Hey, sorry, I was actually listening to Stainless. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I was busy being a dad. My my boy's seven weeks old, and, um, yeah, he, he, he needs a bottle action. But, um, yeah, I got um, I, I got the exact same picks as Stainless. I want to be marked down just like that. And um, <clears throat> with the whole thing, David Lemieux, I, I hope to, uh, that he impresses everybody with another big knockout. Um, I hope that that Emmanuel Taylor surprises a lot of people. Because, um, I mean, you know, that was a great interview. And I like Steven's theory about the main event. It really stuck out. Like, I stuck out. I really enjoyed uh, that idea. And I, I hope for that, too. But that, that doesn't change my pick. I see it going two different ways. I see, um, I either see like a Curtis Stevens versus David Lemieux with a hungry Canelo, or I see Danny Jacobs versus Triple G in favor of a hungry Chavez, him being Danny Jacobs, of course. So, I mean, that's the type of buildup this has for me, but I don't really, now how much, how much excitement does it bring? For me, uh, personally, um, I just don't see the second result likely. I see, I see it being more like, you know, I mean, you quit on the, on the stool. I mean, that it's going to be rough to, but like I said before, this is about Chavez. This is not about him winning this fight. To me, it's about him proving himself and the critics wrong that he is in fact a really good boxer, really great boxer, whatever you want to say. I mean, he, it's, it's about him coming up there and being a great showing and not being quitted. That's the main important thing that I see for him. And I mean, obviously the goal is always to win, but who, who uh, really picks him to win other than Steven on the panel? <laughs> Casual. I, I, I picked him. I picked Chavez. I'm 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 listening. Oh, Tuesday yeah. too. Listen, mm, optimistic do Prime. Do has hey, listen. I'm, I'm 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 all for you. Like, can you why? I think I think you know. Besides what the obvious yeah. is that he's motivated to represent you know his name and vindicate himself from all the bad talk that's been going on. I I think that you know his his uh linking up with Nacho Bernstein for this fight memo that combination and um it's gonna be it's gonna be something special. We're gonna see what was that, Cash? And his dad. And the dad. Well, the dad's you know he's been there in other times, but just that there's a lot on the line, like uh like Brad is saying, his reputation. A lot of optimism on the line for you guys too. But Brad, hey, you for calling in. You took too long to answer that, man. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Brad, man. Sorry. I was waiting. I was waiting for the answer, bro. Let's go to because he's about to put three miles in. <laughs> yo, yo. Hey, yo, man. What up? What up, y'all? Hey, buddy. What's good? Who this? QB? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You know what? You know what? You already know. Yo, you sound like I'm like, right like, now. Like, <laughs> yo, listen, my picture like this, man. I got Chavez. Yeah, oh, QB. I don't know nobody out. Canelo a Beagle, man. He trying to he trying to pick and choose like Mayweather. He trying to he trying to he can he's trying to ride Mayweather all the way through. You know that trying to be A side and all that. I know like I don't understand that, but it's all good. But Chavez gonna beat him though, cause he's not knocking Chavez down. He couldn't even knock out Cotto. So he's not knocking. He 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 knocks out people with no chin like Kirkland and fucking the mayor Khan. And I got. Tell over Matisse, cause Matisse he out, he on his way out. He remind me of a uh, uh, a Hank Lundy. You know, what I'm saying tries hard, but ain't gonna do nothing. And then he moving up. He find that one four seven. His power is not gonna be the same. He's on his way out. He declined. He he gave up on that postal fight. He could have got up, but he just stayed down. He gave up. And then like they said, like Joe Diaz makes his fighters come forward. And until they're going to be tattooing them all day, he's quicking on them, that jab in the face all day, he ain't going to have no answer for that. Unless he get caught. You know, and um, Matisse, no, and Lemieux, I got him over uh, the other guy, whoever the other guy is, uh, Ray's, whatever his name is. And then uh, the junior guy, the DS Jr., I got him. So that's basically my picks. And yeah, I like Shannon Briggs. What's wrong with Shannon Briggs? Give him a chance, like. Y'all don't like Shannon Briggs because he got that gray beard and he ugly. Keep it real, all y'all. Keep it real, man. Yo, that's why. No, I'm- no, that that's not what it is. I I think Shannon Briggs is a fine person, but he's not an elite boxer. So he's not being elite fights. He not yo. He knocked his last whatever he for whatever he for. He knocked that dude out. Who then? Who was that guy? Who was that guy? QB. Who was he? We got to what? Who was he? He, he, he? What's his name? Ran out of the fight. What's his name? If he knocked out this big guy, man, the, the uh, top ten guy, we should know his name. Who did he beat? That's in the top ten. Tomato can, you right? But that's how that's how they put it. Though. And, and if Wilder fought Shannon Briggs, that would be a tomato can. If Anthony Joshua fought Shannon Briggs, that would be a tomato can. We would view it as such. No, how? Yo, everybody that hates on Wilder. If Wilder fought Shannon Briggs, everyone would hate on him. He got a fight. So he fights somebody, then y'all could judge him like that. He knocked the other dude out. He pushed him for David Hay. They made he lied to him and all that. You got to get Shannon Briggs a try. You know, he the guy's 44. He's had his shot. He's been boxing professionally for 20 years. He fought Vitaly Klitschko. That was his shot, was Vitaly Klitschko. What do you mean give him a shot? He had a shot over a decade ago. Get the fuck out of here with that fuck shit. Come on. Yo, why are you so angry, bro? I, I I know. Let's go, champ. You need some anger management in your life. QB, thanks for calling in. We going to our boomerang, Mr. C. The DJ? Hello. Yo, what up, Mr. C? You there? Oh, no, it's Mr. C, senor. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, yeah, okay. 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 Um... I'm down with Shannon Briggs, though. I'm down with that, too. If, if, since Matt seems happy about it, I'm down with Shannon Briggs. Um, but I, and before I pick my picks, is Jojo, D, is, Jojo, <laughs> is Jojo Diaz the one whose dad taught him with, with the book? Jojo Diaz. The, is, taught him with the book. Yeah, I know. They, yeah, they were kids who learned boxing because their dad was reading from a book or something, and now I know Thurman has a story that's similar to that. I remember that uh, Thurman saying that his pops gave him a book and he was reading through it and heard of all the heroes and that's how he got into boxing. Now, now there's, a little, there's a Mexican fighter, but well, fuck it. If that's Jojo Diaz and I'm picking him. I like that. That dude is pretty good. He just needs, he needs power on his punches. Um, I got a... I think a Golden Boy is trying to get him a Tise a fight, so they bring him back against a... Uh, off, uh, I guess a well-rested Manny Taylor, no power punching. Tyler. But I think I think Emmanuel will move and get this get this victory. I'm going with Lemieux. Um, as far as the Canelo Chavez, I always been picking Chavez. I think uh, his reach, 
is going to play a factor in this game because and Canelo likes to fight in spurts, rest on the ropes. He usually does that get people he could he could pop off and counter it. If if Chavez could use his weight and that reach, Canelo can't really be as a, a offensive as he's used to being when he's resting on those ropes. And I think just the combination of uh, his strength guy Mimo, I think his name, in order for him to use that weight, he probably had to have him doing some calisthenics or something. And if he could use just a little bit of Kodo's movement, Kodo's movement, that's why, that's why everyone says he couldn't knock out Kodo. Kodo was dancing his little ass off around that ring. That's why he couldn't get knocked out. If, if Chavez could use just a little bit of that movement, perhaps with the, with the, the, the reach and then with the bully, I think I'm going with probably like a, a wear down 11th round stoppage with Chavez. That's my picks. Mexicanos al grito de guerra. Mm, mm, mm. Two zero six, you're up. Cisco. Cisco. I was just about to say that. How come that's not his intro? <laughs> Ricky from Austin. By way of Chicago. Mm. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, man? Hey, uh, so Friday, I haven't really heard too much since I jumped on about Gamboa. You know, he shook up the rust in the last fight. You know, it wasn't the most entertaining, but I saw him shake the rust off. He looked good, so I'm looking forward to that fight. There's a lot going on, you know, at 126, 130. So I want to see him get back in there. Uh, let's just hope he puts on a good show tomorrow night. Um. And Matisse, I mean, him and him and Taylor. Um, Matisse, I know there's question, question marks. Um, but, like, you know, we hear Teddy Atlas say pressure breaks pipes. I think he has that in him. Who win the fight, but he's up against a solid dude. Um, that's a coin toss to me. Uh, Lemieux, Lemieux's going to destroy this guy. Now, I'm really interested in Lemieux, though, because. I know he's with Golden Boy. I know people have been, you know, whispers going on within the boxing media and, and what we read about uh, Lemieux and, and Canelo. Um, then also you got Billy Sa Billy Saunders just hanging out with the belt, just chilling. So I would like to see that fight take place, Lemieux and uh, Saunders. Um, but I, Lemieux's going to destroy that guy. Uh, I think he's underrated a little bit, but. Uh, Chavez, Chavez and and Canelo. I would like people to watch. I would encourage people to watch um, Chavez when he fought Peter Manfredo. How he moved, how he boxed. If if Chavez can utilize that jab and implement the movement, I think he's got a decent shot and, and show some kind of discipline and not get caught up leaning forward trying to slug and go to the body. <clears throat> I think he'll be fine. Um, I think he could put up a good fight. Canelo, I'm picking by decision. Uh, Chavez, I think Chavez got a decent chin to handle uh, Canelo, but a lot of people, from what I've been hearing, I mean, Canelo's not that small. The guy, <laughs> he could put on some weight. So, <clears throat> naturally, Chavez will be bigger, but um, I see Canelo taking that decision. I think he's just going to he can utilize jab, movement, counter. Um, Canelo just, like I said, man, if he can just utilize his, his, his attributes, you know, jab, move, uh, take, use that jab to set up body shots. He's got, Chavez got some good body body shots, man. Uh, he, can, he can inflict some damage. So, I got a left, quick, a left field question for you. If, if Canelo was fighting Boo Boo Andrade's, would you feel the same way? Are you talking about in terms of uh, technicality? No. I'm just I talking about... Be a lot more tough to fight than this I was just talking about picking a winner. Oh, who would I pick between Andrade and Canelo? Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. I've oh, okay. What about a Charlo? Oh, Charlo. <laughs> okay, now we could go. We go. You, you, you lost. <laughs> Dang, bing, bell rang. You should have answered real quick. Real quick. 
Thanks, guys. Ricky, thanks for calling in, brother. Marcus in D.C. Yo, let me take this off a of speaker real quick. Yo, I got something to say, man, and I just thought about it all before I was being on the line. Yo, it used to be a show that came on called Pinks, and it was about car racing, people who build cars. And there's three races, and the very first race that they raced, it was just car on car. It was head up. And then depending on the results, then they come back and they would negotiate on what person would limit, like, or whether they would give a person a head start or take nitrous oxide off to eventually get a close race, okay? Well, I think of Canelo, I'm thinking this A-side nonsense. It's all about negotiating advantages. We don't, we never going to see a head-to-head -head fight. So I'm going to say these two things. I think Chavez is going to win the fight but, uh, and the fight in the ideas of public opinion, but I think Canelo is going to get the victory at the end of the day in the history book. But I think public opinion Chavez is going to beat the dude. I think um, Chavez, I think Canelo already trains intermittently and has problems with conditioning, and that's going down to 54 and gaining, you know, coming in at 173. I think he's going to have a big surprise just like Kell Brook when he decides when he wants to move, having this added 10 pounds, having not coming down, being stronger is not always necessarily going to make you as mobile or athletically uh, uh, as inclined as far as your conditioning. He may gas out sooner than he normally does. He won't have a lot of problems with Chavez. The far as the thing with Shannon Briggs, and I hope my man Larry is listening, especially big shout out to uh, King I mean, and uh, Stainless. Listen, Larry said it was wrong. He said the only reason why the UK fans is big because they're the most popular heavyweight, but then that doesn't justify the George Groves fought 81,000 in Wembley before this fight. The problem with it is, is like people like Matt want who they want to be the champion. If Shannon Briggs, to me, this is how I feel like. If you make a fight with Shannon Briggs against the heavyweight champion and he beats the heavyweight champion, he's the heavyweight champion of the world. Too many times. Oh, that's you know, very true. You know, has, he, has he earned that fight? Too many, but, but, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Too many times we want to make – but listen, when you when they fight some of these dudes that are the the, the, the so supposedly tune-up fights, um, Matt, those persons never um, – they, they, they don't haven't earned it a bit either. The fact that matters is the reason why they, they give those people those fights because they don't expect them to win. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, is that too many times we are, we, are, we, are, um, we are deliberately making who we want to be the champion. And so as a buyer, just like, for example, it's WWE. If you knew yeah, who was going to win, you stop market. buying it. You stop buying No, listen to what I'm yeah, saying. It's not that. For me, it's not that. I want people to earn title shots. I want this to be a sport. Yeah, but, but listen to what I'm saying, though. Listen to what I'm saying. Some of these bums that they're putting into these fights with our champions, they're not non-title fights, okay? So that means that, if realistically speaking, that, that they have an ability to win the champion, and we would have to acknowledge them as the champion. And they're less deserving than Shannon Briggs has been. So if you put David Hay in a fight with Bellew, like, he really deserved that fight. But it's a fight that needs to be made, and if the person wins... David Hay wasn't a champion. We asked more of champions than non-champions. If Shannon Briggs can't fight, then let a champion stop him, man, and be done with it. Let, let him it. earn a shot at a champion. That's what I'm saying. Let's Has stop, he fought any top ten heavyweight? Stop. Has he beat anyone in the top ten? No, no, he hasn't. So what has he done to earn that shot? Nothing. Listen, let me just say this last Matt, what are you doing here? You're going to turn into uh, a monster now every time someone wants Shannon Briggs to get a shot? Right. Well, he personally addressed me saying that Matt wants champions that he wants or something along the lines. So I had to address that back. I don't know, man. That, that's not what this is about. This is not me wanting AJ to be the champion. I'm scared of Shannon Briggs. No, I want somebody to earn title shots. You sound like a bit of a monster. Hey, hey Enrique, feel good about yourself. Yo, first of all, let me say, I don't pay showtime to see you all damn not even putting in a goddamn motherfucking effort. If I want to see two motherfuckers just fight, I think I'm going to fight with somebody in the street. Mm. Don't need that shit. You don't love that sport, my dude? Just move along. Gone. Fuck you. Man, you want a great show? Come stop, donate. Woo! That's a $100 intro. Whoa! Woo! Woo! Come I can like it. I see the high energy going on here today. Mm, Georgie, it has yeah. been a long time. Georgie, my brother, how you doing? Yo, catch up. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Let me let me let me congratulate you, man, because you get it. You in her MD out. Mm. Gotta get that motherfucker out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Cash, I love you, baby. You know you're my favorite, man. I haven't talked to you for a minute, but I gotta ask you a favor, doggy. Oh, what's up, doggy? Please don't say that the WBC 
is the most prestigious belt out there. Oh, what belt is? You've really been out on this mafia for a long time, baby. Mm. So just, we just got to educate the rest of the fans out there that there is no Santa Claus. Okay, wait, which belt? Which belt is the been out there for a long time? Which belt is that? Technically, the WBA was formed a year before the WBC. If I'm using technical terms, the old shape. Listen, the old shape belt. At this point, the old shape belt. But the WBC, we know that this combaggery that these people fucking run. Now they want to grab this belt. They give it to indigenous people down on fucking Mexico, so Canelo can feel bad and have these motherfuckers attached to his name. That's the type of reptilians we're talking about here. They think that these fucking bullshit tricks gonna work. They ain't no Jedi now. That ain't no Jedi mind trick. You ain't fooling nobody with this shit. You may fool with Mr. Jeff that doesn't know what the boxing boys mean. You can fool him and he will put a fucking WBC fucking stamp in the banner that should not be there. Because the fucking banner of TVB represents the voice of the people and got shit to do with that goddamn mafia. Mm. So that being said, the vampires got me. I'm going to buy HD because I'm not going to see no fucking, uh, fucking soda roll made with the shit. I'm going to see two guys that are going to go there and crack skulls, baby. Crack skulls. Who are you going for? That's all we want to see as a boxing fight if there is no bell on the line. Who are you going for? Support. One love to everybody. Who are you going for? Chavez? Going on a side. He's fucking... Nah, nah, I'm going A side, I'm going Canelo, I'm going Lemieux, and uh, you got the Argentinian dude, you got Matisse as uh, A side too, or not? Mm -hmm. I'm going with Matisse. I'm going to pay attention more to the green belt and see if they full of shit, but I, I, the reason why I say the green belt is the best belt is because without it, your collection don't look too good. Baby, but that sentimental value since the fucking 80s. This nigga got 30 plus years. They don't wear shit. Mm. Same mafia, same bullshit, same taking bill, coming out with the fucking diamond champion. Georgie, 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 they, which belt do you were. like, Georgie? Which belt do you like? None of them. None of them. Okay, so what, you see what, you so what should we do? So what should we do? Listen, as a fan, we should select who's the champion. And tell all these people to fucking go away. Who's your champion right now? If we unite at the if we unite at the Fed, we can declare our own champion. We will get the fight that we want. But these people have proof over and over and over so where, they fight with money. So what about the and fighter? Like the but what about the fighter? The fighter wants a belt. So as as the fans selecting the champion, I mean, where are we gonna get the belt from? Are we gonna mass produce these it? These people they can these people cannot live without us. They cannot. This but they the still problem. want we the bell. They we, pay 3%. You heard, they Matt. Gonna, no, no. They're going to want more the respect of the people than the bell any goddamn day. Man. People fight for glory, too. They don't just charge it. Charge it. This ain't the revolution, man. He's taking down there. That's the dream world. Georgie, stop crying. <laughs> yeah, Georgie, he, Georgie was ready to get yeah, down with the revolution. Yeah, he got to march onto the fucking WBC headquarters, man, and tear it down. The WBC, they are mafia. The IBM. Shut it down. Shut it down. We got their reptilians. Shut it all down. We the reptilians. They don't have. The they don't have the Jedi. The they don't have the Jedi mind games to compete with Georgie. Shout for them grays, George. No. Nah, the reptilians, dog. Nobody. The vampires. Let me give a shout out to everybody, though. Let me give a shout out to all the fans. They had never abandoned TVB. Even that some of us have fallen out here and there, we're still supporting. And that counts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm out here. Lick a shot. <laughs> Mr. Mr. What's that dude's name that's on everybody's shirt from Argentina and shit? That's who Georgie think he is. Messi. Who? <laughs> the, the dude with the salt? Like, nah, the dude with the fucking beret and shit. Cheva Vega or some shit. Oh, yeah, Cheva Vega. Whatever. The fuck.
Fucking hipster alert right there. Come on, hipster. You know you got a shirt with that fucking guy's Isn't in it. Chad I Cuban? do not have a shirt. <laughs> no, he's not Cuban. He's not Cuban. Argentina. Oh, he's Argentinian. Yeah. No, but he, 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 you uh, think of like Fidel Castro there. Yeah, he did. But the hipster got a shirt with his face on it. He goes out over overlooking the mountain of the Hollywood sign. Smoking. You enjoy, I don't have a shirt with my face on it. I got like Tupac I'll shirts. Face. I'll be that hipster. You have a Vegas face. Yo, let's go to 951. 951-951. Estamos aquí en la voz del boxeo. Estamos hablando la pelea, la gran pelea de México con Saúl Canelo Álvarez contra Julio César Chávez. 5-9-1, compa, dígame. Tú dijiste que me iba a noquear en el, en el ocho rounds, ¿sí? Tú te dijiste. Tú no lo dijiste. Ok, te puesto. Yo peleo con los mejores. Yo peleo con los mejores. Puesto, te puesto. <laughs> Yo, what's up with they keep betting their purse, man? What is that? Nobody's going to be talking. ¿Con quién tú peleado? Son, son solo número. You think he... ¿Quién son? <laughs> Yo, can I... 951, are you there? I'm sorry hey. for my co-host. 951, hey. are you there? Well, you know how many times I said is he there? He's obviously not there. He's just listening. He, he picked me because he think I that I'm easier than Triple G. Es que tú eres más fácil que Triple G. Triple G es una máquina, tú eres nadie. You know, he's a hastra. <laughs> you know what a hastra is? Steven, can you speak Spanish? You know, hey, Matt, hold on, Max. Steven can speak Spanish. Max, Steven, you, you know what a hastra is? is? Yeah, man. West Coast people don't Ness look Spanish. Like, Ness is always dumbfounded whenever he finds out that I can't speak I, Spanish. I, I, it's I, like a monstrous to him. I'm Portuguese. I got to excuse. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not Mexican, Steven? No. Oh, uh, no. I'm... You should have not put that out the back. Oh. I left it that way. Oh. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Uh, he That sounded confused, like he's maybe Mexican, maybe he's not. <laughs> what the fuck is he about to say right now? <laughs> I root against I root against Canelo. How could I be Mexican? Oh! But you, but you pick Chavez, who is Mexican. So what, you Honduran? No, I'm not Honduran. Salvadorian? Salvadorian? Chilean? No, he's not Salvadorian. Colombian? Nah. Not I'm American. I'm born in America. It's España. Oh it's España. Yeah. What is your, okay, okay, Mr. Technical Guy. What is your parents' descent? Okay, yeah, it's Mexican. I'm Mexican. Lineage. Oh, get I'm the Mexican. Out of here, Steve. And they didn't speak Spanish to you? No. They're probably doctors. So right now, you don't know. <laughs> so right now, you don't know that I'm saying, like. We know nothing. But un, un you hombre, know nothing. Un hombre bien honesto. Tú eres un hombre cagao. Tú estás cagao. I didn't say that. <laughs> Shit, I said you're a monster. monster. Can we get Monster on to be the translator? That's you're an huh? honest man. This guy said that you shit your pants. Yeah, Monster piece in practice at translating. <laughs> hey, if you guys you can, hey, hey, listen, you can clearly see who's your friend and who's not. I'm I'm just saying that because you don't speak Spanish. All right, we got one more call. Let's get out to J. Will on Skype. J. Will, what's up? It's actually another J. Will, not the J. Will from Ohio either. No, no, this is uh, J. Winter. From Winchester, right? Hello? Winter, Jay Winter, Jay Winter from Queens. From oh, Jay office, Winter, office. Jay Winter from Queens. Yeah, yeah, you know. Man, you got a horrible connection, Jay Winter. I don't know. Uh, get by the window and act like it isn't winter. Jay, is that a... You still sound like Optimus Prime in uh, Trans. Yeah, you don't sound good. I'm good now. You better? You better? Yeah. Go for it. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, real quick, um, Canelo Chavez, uh, I think I think Canelo's going to um, knock that boy out. Uh, he could handle from far. And like the other caller said, he looks completely drained. And let's just be honest, man. You can't go in against Canelo and not be 100%. You know, Canelo is actually getting better per every fight. And um, Chavez has not proved that he can handle the likes of a person who got knocked out by a construction worker, let alone handle uh, a true champion. So that's that. Uh, Shannon Briggs deserves a shot because of his lineage, because of his legendary status. <gasps> if, you don't, if you don't mind, if you don't mind watching a 41-year-old non-champ fight this young sprite superhero to stop crying about shannon briggs the fact of the matter is fights are made because of people wanting to see them or the money that's it so 
if people want to see it, if, if the Londoners like uh, like uh, Shannon Briggs, let them fight. Yeah, we're gonna officially we're gonna officially have to put like a, a GoFundMe page for Matt and his sound bites. He got two sound bites. And he just fucking well, I it. lost my computer. All the other sound bites I had. Oh, oh blame they're gone. Brain, yeah. And all the sound bites you gave me, Ness, they're gone too. Sad. Yo, that's why we got to go see Briggs. You see, we'll be in a hotel room exactly. and I can airdrop everything. Ah, uh, it's true. Do, 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 so do, 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 do. I mean, I mean, that's the airdrop. I, 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 I end it like this, man. At the end of the day, if Shannon Briggs did knocked out her and, and AJ retires him, all that does is add extra hype because it's now... It's Yo, but Jay, Jay Winter, come on. Briggs man. doesn't add anything Jay to Winter, anyone's resume right now. Jay Winter, uh, you don't think it would be unfair that a guy like Briggs got the fight before Luis Ortiz, Pulev, I mean... Joseph Parker, Deontay Wilder, Miller. a Vladimir Klitschko re re rematch. He, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a good point. Isn't it unfair that Damn, Chavez, Mr. Aggressive that Chavez got the fight before That's Triple G? It is unfair. Yes, okay. we said that numerous times. What I'm saying, history can show plenty of champions who fought people who didn't deserve to fight them. We all know that. I mean, quite honestly, Jacinto Lopez didn't deserve to fight Victor Ortiz or Canelo. So, oh, because no. people but have shit fights before, we should allow shit fights now. Um, I, I don't accept man. that reasoning. I think that's a Bro, lame. But I mean, no, but I mean, Briggs man. is a draw. Come on. So, who's a draw? Who's a draw? Briggs. People will come out to see Briggs. He's not elite, though. I don't care. I, I don't, don't care about the numbers. Are expensive. Yeah. I heard ticket prices are expensive. I don't get a paycheck from Shannon Briggs. I don't give a shit how much he makes or how much he brings in, how many people will show up to his fights. But I'm saying that the, the people will come out and see the fight regardless oh, of how you feel that. about his... Uh, his sack. It says, pay to the order of Matt Hunter. And it says, from Chi. <laughs> Yo, Doomsday's live is hilarious. Oh, that's a dope oh. sound bite. Oh, oh. Look at Matt. He's just there boiling under his oh. Oh. Let's go, champ. Yo, I'm bringing on Monster Beast because she wants on. Only my East Coasters know about that. I'm buzzing. Somebody's buzzing. Stevie, yeah, Stevie. Damn, Stevie, Stevie. get your face off Meet the mic. Meet yourself, Stevie. <laughs> That's Matt. <laughs> I was muted. What are you talking about? Okay. Monster? Yo, what up? Me and Oh, uh, there Hello. she is. Ooh, yeah. sound like Janet Jackson. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Mira, ¿qué tú estás Estamos haciendo? aquí sí, en la voz sí, del boxeo. Estamos aquí en la voz del boxeo. Estamos hablando Canelo Álvarez contra Julio César Chávez. Tenemos a la señorita Ana. Ana, díganos, ¿con quién vas? ¿Y te cambiaste de Pucci? Sí, o Steven, espérate. Yo, what's good? Steven. Yo, what's good? Estivo Steven. <laughs> ¿Qué estamos haciendo aquí? Estamos hablando español. Steve, Steve. Steve, who, she's asking who do. Who, yeah, who, I know, I know. What's um, for you? Either I Steve or. I don't really. Steven. I don't really have a preference. Stevie. I know it's Stefan. TV. Stefan. Nah, that's not with a PH. Steven. Te voy a llamar Steven porque así se llama el primo mío. Oye, Steven. Tienes que aprender español, mi amor. Tienes que aprender español. Es Steven. Como primo. Te vas a quedar atrás. Te vas a quedar atrás because boxing is what? 50% Hispanic, 50% black. And I mean, 50% Hispanic, probably like 50% black, and then everything else is other. Yeah, that, I mean, by that math, then yeah. Other. <laughs> no, why y'all putting Steve on the spot? He don't know English. I mean, Spanish. So why? Oh, I, got, I got plenty of friends like that. Right? <laughs> got a couple Puerto Rican friends who uh, who don't know Spanish. Yo, but Puerto Ricans, none of those motherfuckers know Spanish. Whoa. Oye, oye, oye. Yo, yo sé español. Yo estoy aquí. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> oh, you just yeah. Yeah. offended and yeah. reached. Wow. Talking exactly yeah. about you. Inspired. Mate, cae mate. Yo sé lo que tú estás hablando. 
Yo, that no, sounds casual horrible. Know how to speak. Casual know how to speak more than Steven, though, because at least casual twice. Steven doesn't even try. I'm surprised. Hey, but Steven knows on the West Coast, like, usually, like, parents don't teach their kids Spanish as as often as we see on the East Coast. Not Mexicans. Yeah. In my, in my house, they, they didn't let me speak um, English. I had to speak Spanish. You over here, like, they, encur they, they encourage speaking Spanish um, English a lot more than speaking Spanish. Which is weird because just like uh, just like in the West Coast, um, they have. I'm pretty sure they have uh, you know Latino communities. So I find it kind of weird that they wouldn't. No, be they, they do, but if you don't speak Spanish, then you're literally not part of that community, and you're an outsider, and they don't recognize you as Mexican. That's why I can't identify as it because wait, where I grew up, I'm not. Wait, but every food, like growing up, if your parents are Mexican. <laughs> All the food is mentioned. The music. This was a good time to put the music on. I won't deny Steven, it. Steven, don't worry about I it. Steven, I accept you. Thank you, monster. You That's why I'm moving to the East Coast. As out of Mexican. We got the super mix here on the East Coast. That's why I'm up. That's why I'm uprooting. <laughs> On the East Coast now is a different story. Mexican, they're like, oh shit, I would never tell that you were Mexican. But on the West, you know. You have to say tacos. You don't say tacos. You don't say. Um, yeah. Well, you say horchata. Right. Are, we just, Are we done? Are we done with this history how many lesson? I speak. Oh. oh my God. We're just we're closing the show, man. Jesus yeah, this, is, this is overtime. La voz del boxeo. Va a empezar a reportar el deporte del boxeo pronto. Let's do a Spanish segment. Uh, Monster, go. Start it off. Master, queremos saber la opinión suya sobre la batalla que va a ser aquí el sábado contra Julio la César. Gran la gran batalla. La gran guerra para la, para la reputación Alex, mexicana. Alex, usted necesita un minócrifo, hermano. ¿Quién es que está hablando? ¿Quién es que está hablando? Ese es Alex. Ese es Alex Tunce. Le está hablando el reportero de la voz del boxeo en español. Golpe a golpe. El periodista. Alexander Lioness. El león o el caballo. <risa> el caballo. <risa> Yo creo que Ana no se puede defender en español bueno. Wow. Ana, queremos saber su opinión en qué es lo que tiene que hacer Chávez Jr. para ganarle a Canelo. Va a ser el gancho, izquierda. Canelo, ¿qué es lo que va a tener que hacer Chávez Jr.? Si Chávez Jr. no golpea a Canelo suficientemente para herirlo, Chávez no va a ganar esa, esa, esa pelea. ¿A, qué, qué, ¿A dónde precisamente usted cree que, que Chávez le tiene que pegar? ¿Tiene que ir al cuerpo más? ¿Tiene que hacer combinaciones de afuera de, de la distancia? No, no importa, no importa. Tiene que herirlo y darle suficientemente duro para que Canelo lo pueda respetar un poco, a que ellos puedan los dos darse suficientemente y tal vez este Chávez pueda aprovechar de esa, de esa oportunidad, pero no creo que Canelo va a poder, no creo que Canelo lo, lo va a dejar, yo creo que Chávez no tiene suficiente estrategia técnica para ganarle a Canelo, pero yo creo que Canelo sí le va a ganar a él, yo creo que él le va a ganar con más experiencia, no con más experiencia, Yo. sino con un poco más de inteligencia que lo que tiene Chávez. Ana, Ana Marie. Yo, she said everything I said earlier in the show, though. Yo, Ana Marie, just translated Ana, Marie Rivera, Ana Marie Rivera en el, en el oh, chat. Steven Calderon. Yo, no, what, Monster, Monster, why you cutting my, you why you cutting my segment off? I'm not saying that you copied, I'm just oh, saying that speak, we're on the same page. We're speaking no. English now? Thank God. Don't worry, same man, side. we're going to speak a little Portuguese now. We're going to fall out of Portuguese agora. Get Monster Peace out of here. She just cut my whole part off. I was about to give a little shout out to Anna in the chat. Ah, beat it. Get the song, Nestor. Nestor, no, 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 Ana Maria Rivera in the chat was like, she wrote in Spanish, ¿Qué carajo está pasando? <laughs> Dile a Ana Maria que, que, que cuando estamos cerrando el, el programa, que nosotros nos volvemos locos, porque así es que la gente va apagando un poquito. Yeah, you know, we cuando uno está cansado, uno, uno suena más borracho. Mm. Good night, everybody. Night, Monster. Ana Maria en el chat. Monster. Yeah.
Good night, guys. Casual, Matt, Steven, Doomsday, Ness, everybody in the chat, Georgie, Cowboys, um, family. <laughs> Who else am I missing? Uh, everybody, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hasta pronto, hasta el sábado, y que viva México. Mm, que viva México y que vive otro mundo también. Que vive en Nueva York. Yo, you have the worst fans. No, no, no me lo moleste al compa que habla como si le, le dieron un putazo en la quijada. Yo hablo español, español en cualquier No habla. Country, how you say country? País. País, en los países. No, no hablo español. Eh. <laughs> Shoot yourself. Yo, and, and, and Smack that's... yourself. Just to talk Spanish like it's his second, it, it, like if English is his second language. Yo, um, he, 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 he goes like this. <laughs> and, you know, yo, don't, 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 yo, just, just, just in case nobody remembers, I'm gonna bring it back. Blackface said Enrique's shirt looked like his girl's tampon. That was that was brutal. That was whack. No, I no. think Enrique, I think Enrique's no. artistic. Yo, First of all, he said he didn't say tampon. <laughs> He said the sleeve since the sleeves are gone, it, it, you can it makes sense. No, that's a cotex. Yeah, that's a shout out to Info Joe. If his girl wears pants, shout, shout out to Info to Joe. Robert. Monster Yo. got the right idea. Info Change Joe. the subject. <laughs> I was about to say, pads is like aimless. I mean, I mean, didn't call in. I'm shocked. He's been on. Oh, he was there. He, he was there. One. I know he didn't press one. I'm shocked. He press one. He's been busy, there. bro. He's been busy. You want to make a pick on Canelo Chavez? I'm just shocked. Why is call in? Why is that doesn't call in for me? Santiago. Triple G. I do more. He's the first one to call in. Cinco de Mayo edition. <laughs> team behind Canelo that made him better than Andrade's. That made him better than the Charlos. Yo, yo, hey monster. So you going out to uh Shannon Briggs fight in June? Let's go. Let's go, champ. He motivates me. Let's go, champ. Champ. You gotta get off that table, champ. Champ. First thing I listen to as soon as I wake up. Champ. It's Monday. Champ. My, my alarm in the morning says, "Let's go, champ." <laughs> champ. Wake up every morning and eat your fruity pebbles, champ. Eat your fruity pebbles. Eat your pebbles. cereal, champ. Cinnamon toast crunch, champ. <laughs> All that sugar. <laughs> All that, <laughs> that, down, down. I did three miles today, though, Enrique. I did three miles. You don't know shit about boxing line looking real right. Dominican nightmare. Mm. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Making a comeback. About to be, about to be all up in the Nicholas... Nicholas Walters house ah. like jabby jab jab on Nicholas Walters. Watch. Yeah, Jamaica. Going to Jamaica. Oh, baby. Oh, where you going? Going to Jamaica, mate, baby. What day? You can't come. Ain't no per diem. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm going on the 28th. Why you coming out there? You ain't coming into Jamaica, mate. Dre coming out there. Diakono, he gonna be out there. We trying to go out to uh Matt. Matt is all crazy. He like, yo, let's go see Shannon Briggs, man. I'm telling you. He talking about he got a hunch. It's gonna be crazy. You taking, you taking the crew with you, um, Alex and Matt? Where? Jamaica? Nah, not to Jamaica, nigga. What you talking you gonna about? Mad. You gonna be like, get the fuck out the room. <laughs> <laughs> Get them the fuck out the room. Nah, but we uh we got something planned, man. We're gonna be doing some bigger some bigger cosas. Like what? Spanish edition still out there. Bigger cosas. I'm your host, Nesta Gibbs. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at Nest G T O. I'm the other host, Enrique Church. You can find me on Instagram Fight Talk and on Twitter, T B V underscore casual fan. And I, I'm uh Matt the hipster or the hater for this show. And uh, you can catch me at Mixed Combat News on Twitter and Instagram, Matt Hunter TBV, and my MMA podcast, Mixed Combat Radios, on Patreon, SoundCloud, iTunes, etc. We're gonna do a show uh, tomorrow morning, most likely. So uh, tune in. Peace. Weigh in show. We got to see if Chavez is gonna be skeleton or skeletal.
Catch me on Twitter, Alex Linus TBV, on Instagram, Alex Doomsday Linus, and um, on Facebook, Alexander Linus. And he got a gold track, gold track music. Manny Pacquiao, he got a go go fund me page and fund him because he needs a microphone. These Everlast pillows are for all those that slept on them me. Everlast, them Everlast the pillows ain't working right now. No, he took shots at, at, at Al. Al you saw that, right? You saw that. Al, Al sounds like he's taking a shit. In the you don't know what it is, though? Oh. Oh. I told him. Enrique, you know, Enrique, Enrique, Enrique mad because they told him his shirt looked like a, a slit tampon. Yeah. I think. <laughs> it's all good. They ain't saying tampon. Hey, yo, Enrique. Yo, nonetheless, Enrique, nonetheless, you... Design? That's the new design right there that I, I'm never going to see. Yo, is that a new casual design or no? I bought this in Miami years ago, you know? Summer in Miami, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. yeah. No, wonder, no, wonder, no wonder they was knocking it. It ain't, it ain't in their Rike oh. Churchill design. They threw Matt's favorite song on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's not my favorite song. Come on. You know my favorite song right now. Oh, shit. Oh, well, forget him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you ain't ready. He ain't, they ain't ready. Uh, the world ain't ready for that. I'm telling you, they ain't ready. They ready. That, that song is uh moving real fast. Nah, the boxing world ain't ready, yo. We talking about the boxing world. Uh, the regular world ain't the same as our world. Oh, but you know what they're ready for, right? Yeah. Like this. Here? Mexicanos al grito. Guerra. El acero a prestar y el What? Once that song goes on, man. You don't know that one by heart? Nah, Alex does, right? Nah, actually, yo, you know what? Yo. I know I don't know it by heart. I don't. Jay Steele, the it's guy that was uh, uh it's a nice it's a nice email, Nacional though. Nice. Jay Steele, Jay Steele got that. He went he went fire on you, B. Dude, he's back in the queue, man. He wants back on. How can he be back in the queue? Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> oh shit, Matt. That's it. The That's boots it. Champ. Dusty I boots. Champ. The cannon. <laughs> yeah, champ. Yeah, champ. You better come to Florida, champ. <laughs> Let's go, champ. You already know. A quindo. Cannon. TPV. We there, champ. Let's go, champ. <laughs> Yo. Yo, no, no, that's the anthem right there. We was killing it in Dallas. Shout out Dude, to Dude, that Kyle. and congratulations by Post Malone. Shout right, out to right. Dallas. It was beautiful out there, man. We can't wait to kill it in another state for real. I got Shout a new, out to R and R boxing track. club. Yeah, R and R boxing for sure. The, the, my 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 Guatemantecas over there. I got a new a new a new track for the new trip. I'm just saying. I know this old, but this this you know this 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 gonna be the new anthem. I'm just saying. Mm. No. Yes. Don't hate. No. Don't hate. No. Go to no memories man. with this one. Oh, 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 oh. Car oh. The Caribbean music that oh. you play. Hey, yo, my man. <laughs> the okay. island music. That's Tory Lanez in that song? No. I, I forget. <laughs> yo, yo, Tory's that dude. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Every the song you play has Tory Lanez in it, guaranteed almost. Almost. Yeah. Just a little bit. I come on and bring Dre Steele on. I want to go for round two. Nah, um, it's you overtime. Can that, you can bring that West Coast uh, uh, Bay Area rap. No, this is totally TBV overtime because Canelo and Chavez son grande. Dike. Nah, but I'm out, man. I got to eat. Dike. Shit, bro. My girl hey. brought me some food, man. I'm home. Hey, wait, what you got? What you got? No, I got a little taco, man. Ah, you sound like two fat boys. <laughs> I'm going to go run this, this ain't fat morning. This Ooh. ain't fat champ this He put the three fat, miles champ. in with me champ this He ain't put the fat, three, champ. three miles champ We did three miles a day champ What you do champ you Did you wake up this. champ You wasn't did looking you like Chavez Jr. running long stepping that shit going Oh second. You wasn't looking like that he, You were like Con quien to peleao Con quien to peleao you Pero no soy yo de la opinión solo, no, solo, solo, You know what killed you know Chavez His whole his whole like heart. I bet you his father was in the studio and his face just frowned down Joker style when he was like, when Canelo was just, he just did the little hair thing too. He was like, I get that the eagle. When he hit him with the get that the eagle. No, not even Max was ready for that. He was like, ah, get the photo of this. 
él nunca ha representado México. Yo, I swear, yo, I thought, yo, I thought he was going to go lighter on him. Yo, he if I was Chavez, I was Chavez, like, yo, because, you know, you people like, oh, Nash, you should have done on the bro. Look, I'm a fucking, not, I'm not a fighter, but if I'm Chavez and that's kind of, yeah, I would have jumped over. That would have been the first face off. We would have seen some contact. <laughs> <sighs> That's, that's why. <laughs> I'm like, damn. That's why, I, that's why I was hoping for that scar face. And you know what, Golden Boy? You wanna go to what, Canelo? You want to go to what, Cinco de Mayo? We're going to go to what? You know? Golden Boy instructed uh, Chavez to speak in English, if you guys didn't know that. They, they wanted him to talk in English. How, how do you know? How you know? Who told you that? Who told you that? Sources. Sources. Yeah. What's your source? <laughs> What's your source? Go, Golden Let's Boy go, said it. Man. Who's your source, champ? Where's your source, champ? Golden Boy said it. Where's your source, champ? <laughs> sources, champ. Who got sources, champ? We all got sources. Who's your source, champ? <laughs> Yo, Golden Boy asked Ch uh, Chavez to speak English. You know that, right? He did. No, oh, you know that, right? I, no, before I, before I, uh, and you know, and Chavez can't go. Just... Fuck no, I may speak Spanish. Exactly. They're not his promoter. Come on, man. Maybe, maybe Chavez. Unless that's in the contract. Maybe Chavez is trying to show him off. Unless it's in the contract that said the A stream face off, you have to speak English. Then there's no way they can do that. Yo, the Doomy Dooms, they just get caught in the lie right now? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm looking for the source right now. And then do it. Yo, look, for time. look for it. Because I read it. I, I read it. And guess what? I read it in an article you sent me, Ness. So. Oh, oh, oh. Canelo, though. Why not Canelo? Yo, that's my breaking know. news right there. When, when, no when you find it, let me know you find it because that's my breaking news uh, soundbite. Check it out. Coming to you live from TVB Studios, we just found out that Shannon the Cannon will be fighting Anthony Joshua in the Wembley Arena. 90,000 minus 70 yeah. will be there. Right now. September 18th. <laughs> nah, man. Yo. It says it right here. Are we, are we really going to wait for Doomy Doomsday? Keep it. Let's wait. Let's wait. Not wait. really. I mean, we're, we're on overtime, aren't we? Yeah, no, we can wait. Yo, you know what? Starting from, from today on, overtime is going to be on Patreon. We're going to go yes. Patreon overtime at 10, too. So whoever on the line, they jacked off. Actually, they get to stay on. They'll get to be on the, the Patreon. Oh, overtime is time and a half, guys. So so can I bring Jay Steele on? I'm gunning for round two. Is he really there? He's, he, dude, he's been there for 12 minutes, going yeah, on 13 minutes. Wait, 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 let, me, let me get to him. Jay Steele, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Jay, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Uh, are you upset? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It was, you know what I mean? It was a productive argument. You know what I mean? Oh, hell yeah. I thought no animosity, right, Jay? Hey, don't be friends now. Don't be friends now, Matt. No, we can battle and still be friends. We can be cool like that. This is TBV. Yeah, okay, so what are we going to debate now, though? I mean, you guys haven't uh, debated that enough. I mean, you lost, right, Matt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've seen his record. You know what I mean? It, since he got knocked, knocked out by Klitschko, it's been George Arias. It's been guys like Sam Peter. I mean, he did have Chizora there, but that was a split decision. You know what I mean? And it's still a win. And it's Kevin Chizora. Johnson is a corpse, man. But Chizora is a good name. And I know it's a split decision, and I'll give you that context, that it was a very close fight and controversial in a way. Uh, but that's Chazor. That's at, at least a top 10, top 15 name in the division. Does Shannon Briggs have that win on his resume r recently? Yeah, but what is the argument, though? What are we arguing here? No, I think, oh, JC, just so I can clarify very quickly. All these sanctional bodies, all these sanctional bodies, they got weak number ones, pretty much. It's, nobody's really earning their position. You know Hell I mean? no. So I'm looking at the best fights, the best, the best, the most interesting fights. And Pulev isn't interesting to me. So what I, would I agree you rather with that. see? What would you rather see? But, uh, but again, I was just comparing Pulev to Briggs. What would he want to see? Listen, listen, listen. Shayna Briggs has already been in the UK. The UK loved this guy. You know what I mean? Canada loves this guy. The US should love this guy. You know how much good fights he gave y'all? Lennox Lewis. Vladimir, oh, uh, no, Vitaly Klitschko, he went 12 rounds. This was seven years ago. Matt, you try to discredit him and say it was like 10, 15 years ago. It was seven years ago. No Don't disrespect, but it sounds like playback. Y'all making it feel like 8.15 right now. <laughs> yo, Jay Still, y'all just reiterating, though, man. We got to go, kid. Like, y'all bugging. <laughs> Mama, no! Again, bringing things up from seven years ago. I, 
I want recent things. Yo, yo, Bama no champ. Give me a little champ. Bama no champ. And, then, and I didn't, I haven't found the source, so I'm gonna have to be to be continued, man. I guess you're, I guess you're wrong. No, 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 no. I read it, but it's, you know, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm not saving. Wait, wait, wait you, like Doomsday, you're, were you wrong to me, Doomsday? Yeah, I, can't like even, I can't even find. I can't even find it where I read it, bro. I'm gonna have to do it on the next show. And that was different news, man. That wasn't related to Chavez and Go. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this Justin Alexander Doomsday caught live on TBV with a false force. <laughs> he had the boxing something Instagram. <laughs> hey, are we doing a live show, Canelo Night? Oh, no, let me correct that. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That's for, again, that's for Patreon only. We're talking about live fight chat? Like, live fight yeah, chat? I'm talking. Yo, the yo, anybody who hasn't heard the 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 the, the Anthony Joshua one, go back and listen. Because the people call me a hater, but bro, that shit had me super duper duper duper. You were hyped. Yeah, I was hyped. Lost a little voice and everything. We were all we're hyped for that doing, fight, man. We're also doing an immediate reaction show. So if you made it this far in the show, you know that on Saturday night after the Julio Cesar Chavez, we're gonna get to a million views right here on TBV. Last time Canelo had an immediate reaction show on TBV, we got to five hundred thousand. So this year we're looking for to get to a million. So you go ahead and tell a friend to tell a friend. If we ain't doing a million, we ain't even fucking taking calls. That's how it's going down, straight up. You're gonna be waiting for calls just like this. <laughs> and while you're waiting, Hello? drunk Enrique is going to be just Hello? off about how Chavez lost. Hello, I'm going to press one. Yo, I finally go to you. You're going to think you're going to talk, but the number you have dialed has been changed. Sweetness, because I hit if Chavez wins, Matt, you got to dump a Modelo on your head. Sweetness. <laughs> Hugo, Hugo, CDO, CDO. <laughs> Julio, Hugo, Hugo, Stelio. Of course, we're going to do a weigh-in show, bro. We're going to do every show, every show. Tomorrow, we're going to do the weigh-in show. We're probably going to watch it live and then discuss it after. I don't know, whatever Matt decides. He's the boss. If he says what? watch it live, we watch it live. If we wait for it to be done, then talk about Skeletor. I mean, Julio, she's a job. Wait, do hold it. on. Very quickly, Ness. Do you mean like doing a show during the live weigh-in? Like we're doing a show as the weigh-in's going on? Fuck yeah. No. What, what time is the weigh-in? What time is the weigh-in tomorrow? I don't know. Yeah, I gotta check. We can find that. Yo, when Dillian that. White, Dillian White fought Chizuro, right? That was the fight, oh. Ness. Yeah. All yeah. right. Me, you, and Doomsday. Uh. Yeah. We was watching that fight. We gonna do that for Chavez Canelo. Are we really? Cause you oh. a stunner. You a stunner. Yeah. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Enrique on Saturday. Like, yo, we gonna do the fight. The number. <laughs> <laughs> I hit one on the. I hit one, I hit one on the queue. I hit one. The it's gonna be like this. It's gonna be like this. You Come have on. reached the non-working number. Come message two five nine. Yo, Alex, we, we still got man. a lot of people rocking out with us, man. We, uh, yo, I'm telling you, Matt. You know what time it is, Matt? What? Yo, that was yo you fly <laughs> Matt over on Saturday. We after hours. Yo. Fly Matt over on Saturday. I don't think it could happen. Um, we found a flight. We actually found a flight for Matt to get here Saturday, but not Sat. I mean Sunday, but not Saturday. Shit, Matt. See what happens. See if we get you here a fucking day earlier. Jersey building. Hey, Mama, no. Ricky. You got it. No, it's Cinco de Mayo, man. You got to put the mariachi, bro. Yeah, but I ain't. I ain't Mexican. So. <laughs> No, no one on this panel wow. is Mexican right no, now. The Mexican dipped off. He was like, <laughs> these fucking Latinos are crazy. Agreed. So, yeah, man. Ana, Ma Ana Marie Rivera. She even types in Spanish. How you like Oh, no. Ay. Uh -oh. What is that? Fucking um, Gloria Stefan? What you got going on over there, bro? Ay. That's that Brooklyn shit. Oh, Matt, Matt, give me some West Coast, Matt. You want some West Coast? Like Bay Area. You know, you know who I miss? Oh, hold on. Let's uh, do it. He rubs his hand like a fly. Yo, oh. matter of fact, my, my Iron Throne, shout out to my man Alex, TBV. Thank you for using me. Oh, oh, oh Block Talk, we holla at y'all. But can't YouTube, we're still live. YouTube, we out here. Hold on. This is for Alex Lemon, North Cal. We out here. 
I won't deny it. Dollar D Beyonce production. Come, come, come with me. Hail Mary, run with me. What do we have in hell? All right. Turn, turn the gun off. Turn the gun off. Yo, Hold on, I got some, I got some West Coast fire right here. Don't even worry about it. I want you to know, Matt, that was an intro. So I just want you to know, you no longer have the illest West Coast intro. Just that was a fire one. That was a fire intro. Just, just saying. I got more. I got more. Check this out, Enrique. Who got that jam on? Who say oh, I do. Who's that, Kendrick? Yo, that's the only thing West Coast dudes play. Kendrick and Tupac. Isn't Kendrick? You don't even know what you're listening to. I said Kendrick and Tupac. That's all y'all. This isn't Tupac. This isn't Tupac. No, he sound like he want to be Tupac. Super drugged out, drug store cow. No, he don't. No, he don't. That shit sound like E40. Who's that? Mac? Mac? Mac Dre? Who that? Nah, that's E40, bro. Nah, nah, you're all wrong. But you're in the better. You're in the Bay Area. That's correct. Mac Dre, man, that's the man. Nah, it's not Mac Dre. No, R.I.P. No, Mac Dre. Yo, see, 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 Mac keeping it. He going all the way out there. Like I, I, I kept it boxing. Check this out. <laughs> so you know who I miss? I miss Blackface. Oh, I ain't <laughs> teasing. I'm teasing. You ain't that? Yes, Oscar Martinez got it because he's from the Bay. Andre Nicotino. Who said I miss blackface? Thank you. Thank yo, you, Oscar. Yo, yo, y'all gotta be quiet so y'all can get it, man. Chill. Right, do it again. <laughs> so you know who I miss? I miss blackface. <laughs> oh, got that heat coming. I'm just saying. TBV, the only spot you could get intros if your calls are fire. Listen, I'm out of here, man. That's GTO. Find me on Instagram and Twitter. And we're going to be at Shannon Briggs' fight because Matt says so. Yeah, I said so. What the hell is Matt playing? What's that? Hey, That's, not me. That's not me. <laughs> That's not me. That's not me, man. Oh, is that Lombard? <laughs> That's Enrique. No, on the outro, though. On the outro, y'all don't know nothing about this. Nah, I ain't going to play that because I was. y'all going to laugh at me. I'm Hit him. Hit him. I'm, I'm not. They're going to laugh at me. I'm out. Peace. Was it Tory Lanez? <laughs> 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 okay.